Go live. We're going live. Oh my god. I hear my mouse clicking. That's usually live. Hey. It's us. Hi. Everyone. How are you doing? I hope well. I hope good. I hope that's good. We have uh, 20 people signed up for today's new player tournament. That's great. I love having all these new players around. That's awesome. Two of them have already dropped after the tournament started. That's less great. That's very, very stressful. We'll have to see how that affects the scores and things. I don't know. I just work here. I am stressed. Very stressed in life. We're still trying to find a house. It has been tough going because a lot of big companies like to buy up properties and then not take care of them at all. And that is, uh, that is bad. That is bad. Right. I do have to check one thing here. Cool, 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 cool. T-Y. So we have two games to start it off. Now, if you have not been to one of my new player tournaments, I want to play one of these soon. I host one every single week. We are here for you, my dude, right? Uh, every single week. We do flip between the EU and NA time zone. So if this week, right now, it's 8 p.m. and I'm starting the stream. That is the NA time zone friendly. It's when people in North America or South America are getting home from work and they have some time to play some games with us. Uh, the other, that means next week will probably be in the EU time zone, which for me is at about noon, when EU people are getting off of work and have time to play some games. So if you live in one of those and you see a new player tournament, is that an inconvenient time for you? That means the next one will be much more on your uh, pace. Yeah. But we always welcome new players. Uh, how these work is there's a Swiss format with four rounds where everybody plays four rounds no matter what. And then if there are any ties at the end for the top of the, the standings, then we'll resolve those in a normal best of one elimination format. But the main part of the tournament is Swiss. Four rounds against random opponents. Just do your best and you get four games, win or lose. Right, 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 right. Started off for the night. We will be casting. We will be casting uh, games from the Swiss format until the finals is ready. If there is a finals, if there isn't a finals, then when everybody's done with the tournament, and if I've casted everybody's game at least once, like I haven't missed anybody, I'll just go through the replays I have left, see any that spike my interest, and we'll cast those and get it done. Okay, it's a bit more casual of a tournament format. It's also a bit more casual of a stream, and that is fine. Start off here, we have Lone Wolf versus Dwembox. Dwembox on the Ogre Kingdoms. Two Lead Belchers, and then some Sabertooth packs. Manages Great Opens and Ogre Bulls on both flanks. More Sabertooth packs, and then four Noblars, four Noblar Trappers as a front line. We have a Slaughtermaster of the Great Maul with just a Troll Guts, and then his Blood Cleaver, which he can get off the zombies pretty easily. All right. On the other side for the Vampire Counts come in. We have a front line of Zombies, a secondary line of Skeleton Spearmen, a tertiary line of Graveguard, Vlad von Karstein, and then Triple Blood Knight. This is actually a pretty good Vampire Counts build versus the Ogres. I don't know if I would say it's like the go-to build, but I really understand what's going on here. Zombies are always pretty cost-effective. Skeleton Spearmen are amazing. And then Graveguard, that one I guess is a little suspect. But Vlad is going to be great. Ogres are terrible at killing foot characters, and Vlad is a very, very difficult foot character to kill, even for factions that are good at it. So your Caster Lord will generally be fine and alive. Triple Blood Knight is always going to be good versus Ogres, just as kind of a rule of thumb there. Electric Cabbage, Corn Demand Skulls. It's probably true. Skeleton Spearmen and uh, the Zombies are still filtering in. Now, the Zombies are just about dead. I don't love when Vampire Counts do this if they overstack the front line. Because you can see, like, these Graveguard that are entering the fight. Look at those little red arrows. They're not going to get to the Noblars. They're stuck on their own Zombies. So, when you, when you group up too many infantry like that, they don't, like, have cumulative impact. They just kind of, like, block each other a little bit. 
But it's going okay. I mean, the Noblars are starting to rout, and these guys are continuing forwards. The Blood Knights are still creeping along the edges. And Lead Belchers are trying to tear a hole through the undead lines. Looks like they're maybe a little obstructed by their own Noblars and such, but they're firing. They're firing away. And that's where the cluster's going to hurt. Speaking of getting hurt, a rear charge on Blood Knights will instantly rout the Ogre Bulls. That's kind of what they do in this matchup. I'm hoping they'll spread out a little more rather than all piling on the same Ogre Bull. But overall, I understand what the Undead are doing. It's a bit of hammer and anvil, which makes sense. But the clustered up infantry are just taking so much damage altogether. It's really brutal. The Lead Belchers are firing straight through all of them. Blood Knights are probably going to have to get onto that backfield and really harass the Lead Belchers. Because, I mean, if Sabertus Packs want to stop you, you can crush them with Blood Knights very, very easily. So it's not much of a problem. But you got to stop these Lead Belchers. They are destroying your front line. Graveguard are already below half HP across the board, it looks like. Vlad sprinting back there. He's going to route off some Noblar Trappers. Maybe he'll go for the Lead Belchers after that. But the Lead Belchers are still taking a mighty toll. And we already have a Butcher out on Ogre Bulls. While some people consider Ogres into Undead to be Undead favored, I do really like playing the Ogres versus any of the Undead factions because of how much you charge your army passive. Feels really good. I just think it's fun. I don't know if they're actually favored matchup for the Ogres. I just know it feels neat. Blood Knights, again, rear charging Ogre Bulls. But once again, I have to say all three of them going together does feel like overkill. So I think that's generally my synopsis of the Lone Wolf's play so far here. I try to offer some insight, but also not be a dick. I really like the engagements he's taking, and I really like his build. I don't love how many things are getting clustered on each other ad nauseum, right? Like, the infantry all got too clustered on each other. The Blood Knights got too clustered on each other. So it's like he's making the right decisions. He's just allocating too many resources to make those correct decisions. So... I like his game knowledge, though. Like, he is picking really good fights, right? On the side of the Ogre Kingdom Slayer, he has a really good formation. Um, good build. I'm liking that stuff a lot. And I think he is in the lead in this game. Balance of Power doesn't say it, but I, I, Battlefield State, I really do think he is ahead. And I think that's deserving. Because both players have good builds. Both players have good game knowledge. And he's just microing slightly better. And in a normal, healthy game, he would be winning. And I think he is winning. I guess if I had to offer a little bit of advice... If you keep the man eaters in the back line to counter charge your, for your lead belchers, charging them out here just made them a little bit of fresh food for the blood knights to gang up on. And we saw even with an overcast of troll guts, they're near their heel cap, but they got mowed down by the blood knights. We're not moving into the backfield. So I guess I would say that, but overall, I don't have a whole lot of advice for the ogres player because they're just playing well. Uh, there's not a, a, a lot of criticism I can offer. The Blood Knights are getting stopped up. But this is kind of the catch-22 of the Blood Knights in this matchup. Lead Belchers are shooting into them, which is great for Lead Belchers. But I just meant all these Ogres piling in, they're still going to get their shit rocked by these Blood Knights. So, the Lead Belchers firing in is what's going to try and make the difference here. Vlad is still trying to chew through some stuff as his front line is uh, hanging around but running out of gas. Blood Knights get another overcast invocation hack, trying to keep them alive as they damage the Maneaters and Sabertooth Packs and all this stuff. You see the Blood Knights, a lot of the models are standing around doing nothing. Actually getting rear charged by man eaters, but they're not offering any DPS since because they're all just so clustered on each other that they can't get good separation. Vlad's fighting his way free of some saber tusks, but I think that is probably the end here as our Blood Knights get creamed. And just Vlad is left alive. all over. Knights have missile resistance. Helps a wee bit against taking shots. They only have that missile resistance if they're not in melee combat. Alright. I'm going to times two speed through this last little blob fight to see how long it takes to kill Vlad von Karstein because this is a replay and we have a lot of replays to get through tonight. And it's not particularly interesting to sit here and wonder how long it'll take Vlad to die. Just watching him grind through as many ogres as he can before army losses claims his soul. There he goes. Good game for both players. Good game, well done. Man Eaters and Lead Belchers did really, really good work. Ogre Bulls did all right. Novo Trappers were firing in the whole time. Sabertooth Packs were around. They did fine. I, 
I don't hate them, but they're not going to get a lot of value in this type of matchup. For Lone Wolf, his Blood Knights did good work wherever they went. His Skeleton Spears did all right. The Grave Guard got kind of mulched, and the Zombies got mulched, but... Yeah. It was close until those Blood Knights got caught, like someone in chat was just saying. Ethan. Yeah. Because once they got caught, then all the Vampire Counts DPS was just gone. All right, let's see. Are these guys... These are the same replay. I'll cast it from Grimgore's perspective, so I'll just delete this one, but I will get to it. Kisla versus Wood Elves. Interesting. Sure. Trogdar the Flatulent versus King of Sparta. Wood Elves versus Kislev. That is a small Kislev build. Where did all the money go? Okie dokie. For Trogdar, we have the Glade Lord. Uh, Pravenoth, Rayma, and Arrow of Kurnos variant. Spellsinger of Shadows of Melkots and Pit of Shades. And then Glade Riders with Spears, a whole bunch of Dryads, some Eternal Guard. We do have one Great Stagnite, the Wild Hunter of Kurnos, and then we have Double Waywatcher for really strong armor-piercing missiles. You know, Cypher Kids Love, we have the Oath Brothers of Tor, some Winged Lancers, newly buffed off of patch 4.2. Kids of Light, Warrior Frontline, Watchman in the Night, more armored costumes, great weapons, and then Patriarch on his bear with his usual spells. But now, since the hot fix, he actually lost Daz's Brazier, so he no longer has the perfect vigor and passive heal aura. Then we have the Tsarina on her bear. Her chariot is banned because it is bugged, not because it is strong. It is strong, but that's not the reason we banned it. She took all of her spells and then all of her abilities as well. Uh, one piece of note that I give in a lot of new player tournaments, but you only ever really want two, maybe three spells max. You're just There's no way you're going to use all six of the spells to be worth paying an extra like, 400 gold for your lord. First Pravenoth Rayma is out on the Patriarch. He is unshielded, and he does not have any missile resist, leaving him quite vulnerable to the Waywatchers who are now going to fall back. They only got one volley on the Patriarch. It took half his HP, but then they were pushed away by the Gizzelites. And the Wood Elves continue to kite it out. Now, we are pretty lax here uh, in new player tournaments with the, the, the rules, but for any astute watchers, I will point out the Wood Elves are breaking the attacking rule here. Their Lord doesn't count as attacking, and the Way Watchers are taking too long between volleys. Again, we are very chill about the rules on a new player tournament, but I do want to point it out in case the players are watching this back, and then, you know, for a, maybe a sweatier game in the future where it actually matters, uh, like and their opponent gets mad at them, you know? I don't want them to not know, but, like, they do to be attacking at a reasonable pace. Now, the Waywatchers have started doing that when they were firing, but there was just a period where the Wood Elves were just purely running away and no one was doing anything. That's what the attacking rule is for. It's like, someone somewhere has to be trying to kill stuff. Wing Lancers are going for a charge on the Dryads, but for some reason, they're kind of just sauntering in. They're not really getting a real charge. I don't know why that was or what they're actually trying to attack, but it wasn't the Dryads. They didn't lower their Lances or anything. The Wood Elves have successfully sniped out the Patriarch. His Fire Blood passive has popped. Silix Lullaby is trying to heal him up, but it takes another volley in the back from the Waywatchers. And they've about taken out that Kislevite healing. Now the Winged Lancers, since they, they aren't getting their charge bonus, because they didn't actually charge the Dryads. They walked into the Dryads. It's a different thing. So they will need to back off here soon and get an actual charge in. The Kislevites are moving up. Patriarch is probably going to die on this next volley as it comes in. There he goes. So the Patriarch is officially down. Now, the Waywatchers have used a lot of ammunition to do that, so it's not like it was completely free. Still overall great for them. And then a Pit of Shades is coming in, too, trying to hit these Kislevite Warriors and the Armored Cossars. Gets a couple of the Kislevite Warriors, but it'll hit the Armored Cossars straight on. Kislev is just having a hard time really getting into the thick of things here. Frostfang tries to poke down the Waywatchers, but uh, the Wing Lancers are losing the frontline fight. The Armored Cossars are now getting in range with their pistols and stuff, but they've already lost, like, two and a half of their infantry units. They've lost one and a half Cav, and they lost their Patriarch. 
Both Brothers of Tor getting a great fight on the top side. They'll fight great Stagnites. They'll fight Wild Riders. They'll be fine. Especially if they pop their Lightning Bolts, which they have not yet, and they really need to do. There we go. That'll lower the stats of these guys and give them a bit more of a fighting chance. But they're going to rip through the Wild Hunters, dude. And they already killed the Glade Riders. So these Oath Brothers of Tor, even without the Patriarch support, are going to do really good work on that top side. Yeah, just look at them go. They're happy as hell to fight all those uh, cavalry. Sorry, and Ekaterin taking some serious damage from the White Watchers as they pick their next target, but her Snow Leopard Summon is chasing off the Glade Lord and actually getting very impressive damage down. Zarina's having trouble. I wonder, is that the Crystalline Sanctuary thing? Yeah, Crystal Sanctuary. 80% damage resistance, but she nets herself. But look at how little damage that White Watcher probably does now. I actually kind of love that. And the Oath Brothers of Tor are kicking ass up here. I know they're dying, but man, they're dying gloriously. 2,200 value just fighting their way through Wood Elf Cav. Zarina does eventually route. And the armor costs are still firing in. The Dryad frontline has taken a lot of damage, but it has held for as long as it needed it to. And these Waywatchers are just dumping damage into Kislev. It is horrendous. Goddamn. That was a good game from the Wood Elves. Kislev, uh, the Winged Lancer is not actually charging the Dryads. They just walked into them. They don't get that impressive charge bonus of theirs. was a big problem. I think the build overall was fine. Uh, I, I probably would have sacrificed the Watchmen in the Night for like two Kosovite Dervishes because those Suicidal Light Cav with the Unbreakable passive are just amazing. The rest of it was fine. I think when the Waywatchers were shooting at him, he needed to get a little more grit. He needed to get more aggressive more quickly after realizing he was getting outshot because like... We were in the game state for too long where the Wood Elves were shooting uncontested into the, the Kislevites. But I don't think the build was bad. The build seemed fine. Oath Prisitor kicked a ton of ass. Wing Glancers got rolled by the Dryads. Yeah. GG. Trogdar had a good build. Played it well. Maybe could have been a little more cagey with the fight with the Oath Prisitor instead of just chucking a whole bunch of Cav at it, but... I mean, it worked out. He just needed to keep him off the archers at that point. GG to that. I have eight messages, so let me check those real fast. Um, replay. Lovely. Replay. Lovely. Spaghetti versus Mel. Okay. Oh, look at it. Boom. Got some games. Have we got the fun replay next? Uh, probably. Yes. Boon Tax Evasion versus Electric Spinach. Green skins versus corn. And that is a lot of savage big and boar boy big and savage biggins. Alrighty, corn versus the green skins. We have a Night Goblin Shaman with Gorkle Fix It and Curse of the Bad Moon. And then a front line of goblins backed up by four Savage Orc Biggins, Grimgore himself, the one true git, and then regular trolls. Four Skirmish Cav in the distance, two Spider Riders, two Goblin Wolf Riders, and each of them has their ROR attached. On the other side for corn, Flesh Hounds of Corn, Occultist with his summon, Scarbrand. With his AoE Rampage, his Self Rampage, that gives him even more damage. And then Slaughtering Carnage. Which is cool, good for him. We have some Marauders, the Hellforged Host, more Marauders, Chaos Wars with Halberds, and then the Knights of the Brazen Throne. As Scarbrand goes absolutely nuts in the background. He wants to be careful, though. He's a little 
overextended. Your next on him gives him only 10 melee defense, but he is going to get a side charge down these goblins, gets a little bit of damage out, and he hasn't popped any of his rampages yet, so so far he's still completely in control. Boar Boy Biggins, Broke Test Bob and other Orc Boar Boy Biggins are fighting halberds and flesh hounds. They don't want any of that, and they're coming back downhill to deal with it a little bit later. Knights of Frozen Throne charging, immediately terrorizing off some goblins. And something is happening over here. I believe that's a Gork will fix it slow so that these boars can charge downhill and into the backs of the Knights of the Brazen Throne, who are trying to path through the Savage Orc Borbo Biggins. I mean, sorry, the Savage Orc Biggins. And get to safety. Dynasty Curse from the Curse of the Bad Moon is affecting all these Marauders and the Hellforged Host. The Hellforged Host should be just fine with it, they'll honestly do well regardless. I still haven't seen Scarbrand pop any of his buffs just yet, as the first wall comes out of the green skins, making those Savage Orc Biggins absolute killers. The corn front line is getting melted away. Marauders running in every direction. Scarbrand honestly isn't looking so hot either. Greenskins feeling good on the balance of power. Flesh Hounds getting kited out by the Spider Riders in the distance too. Cultist is missing a bit of HP. And now, I mean, Scarbrand, even if he pops his Rampage buffs, it just means all these Savage Orcs are going to turn towards him and come kick his ass, so that it's not really like the Rampage is going to help him too much. Gets a big hit onto Grimgore. The Hellforged Toast route off some trolls. Goblins also look like they're about to leave. And I wonder, how many kills has Korn gotten? Korn's killed about 400 people. Does he have a Sword of Korn? Because a popped Rampage on all these Savage Orc biggins, and then a Sword of Korn when they can't dodge it could actually be pretty impactful. Though I suppose they wouldn't all group up onto him. There's other people in here. There's the Knights of the Brazen Throne. There's the Hellforged Host somewhere. They're there. You can see, though, their models are in here throughout fighting against these Savage Orcs. Scarbrand continues to rip through people. How's Slaughter and Carnage charging? 21%. Does give him some good stuff. He uses his AoE Rampage on all these guys. Is there a follow-up Sword of Corn or anything? Curse of the Bad Moon is going through these guys as a full health Chaos Warrior with Halberds rejoins the fight. And Scarbrand is charging back in. Does he have his self buff? I feel like he hasn't used it this entire game yet, but it would make his weapon strength absolutely insane. Curse of the Bad Moon is going through the Corn Forces. Doesn't do a ton of damage, but does apply that debuff to them constantly. And Scarbrand, still in charge of his own faculties, has not used his Rampage just yet, but a big terror out is coming in from the Greenskins as all these Savage Orcs and the Orc Borg Biggins are all running for it. And there's Wrathful Reaper. He has 1.1k weapon strength, and Grimgore might want to be careful about getting into this fight with him if Scarbrand picks him as the target out of everybody here. And he does, hitting Grimgore right in the face. Look, Grimgore actually didn't take as much damage as I might have feared. Other Savage Orcs look like they're about to leave the party soon. Can Grimgore take on Scarbrand? Is that even a thing he is up to? Right now he appears a bit distracted by what's going on. And Korn's pulling back ahead on the balance of power a little bit. Unfor uh, Hellforged Hosts are unfortunately about to die. Korn still has the two Halberds they can fall back on. Their cavalry is still alive, and their cultist is still a little bit alive. For the greenskins, how are they staying on this bounce of power? Full health night goblin shaman, who's just offering what he can. Grimgore is still half HP. We have trolls and savage orcs rallying, but very, very low. Honestly, I would rather be corn right now. The Scarbrand looks like he's just walking around. Bloodforged armor and standard gun pop for Grimgore. Your neck slowing down Scarbrand. Grimgore is not faster than Scarbrand. Even with the 45% speed nerf, Scarbrand's still a little bit quicker on the draw. Slaughter and Carnage is 26% stacked after getting 130 kills. And the Cultist is in here, and Rage Embodied rampages Grimgore away from Scarbrand into the unfortunate Cultist of Gorn that is now getting his ass kicked, but in comes Scarbrand with a rear charge. He misses the attack! Against Grimgore, who now has get back here, pops for extra leadership for him and his Savage Orc Biggins compadres. Scarbrand still fighting with the Horn of Horn, trying to kill off some of these Savage Orc Biggins. We do have Spider Riders firing in. Morgan's Major Brothers and other Spider Riders need to rejoin the fight soon, but they're currently trying to finish off that Flesh Hound, which I guess I can understand. Did something just happen? Oh, it was another Bloodforged Armor. Okay, I saw like a red after effect. I was like, wait, did, did I miss a Sword of Horn? There's no way. Scarbrand does pop Wrathful Reapers down to 1.2k weapon strength, as Grimgore is actually kind of falling apart, standing in all of these Chaos Warriors and fighting the Cultists. He's not having a good time, and he needs to try and get out of here. It looks like he's going to take the fight to Scarbrand while he still can't, kinda can. 
but he loses the, the little jousting duel there. He does manage to rally in the face of this cultist, but Scarbrand is so spooky scary. Can Morgan's Magic Marauders plus Grimgore actually kill Scarbrand? That's probably the only hope, but Scarbrand gets a huge shot on Grimgore, routing him off, and now the Greenskins are just out of it. Grimgore dies, their leadership spikes down, even these guys that thought about rallying are probably going to just rout for the sake of it. And that'll be GG to Scarbrand and the lads. I'm fast forwarding because there is literally no hope for the greenskins at this point. So that is GG. Nice job, lads. Nice job. How's the breed going? Good. Good, good. Not super sure what that means, but I'll just say good and, and be agreeable. Savage Orc Biggins got really good value. Goblins got destroyed. Trolls also... And it did better than I would have thought, but they didn't pay for themselves, not quite. Skirmish Cav, really underwhelming performance from some of them, which is a shame, but that is kind of typical of the Greenskin Skirmish Cav. They're tough to get to pay for themselves. Grimgore did okay, but Scarbrand is a bit better as a combatant. He's more expensive, so it makes sense. Knights of Brazen Throne got some good kills. Hellforged Host did amazing on kills and value. Halberds did very well. Cultist and Scarbrand both did great. Excuse me, Fleshhounds had a bit of trouble, but it kept the Skirmish Cap busy all game, so I guess I can't criticize them too much. And then the Marauders got mostly destroyed. GG. Please tell me you can see your, your improvement. I can. That build... That build is very... Boon Tax Evasion level of spice, but it's also less meme and a little more viable. So I like it. All right. Captain Tealus and Heimdallar. Beastman and Slanesh. A matchup we saw in the tournament finals I was streaming earlier today between Berserk and Butcherbird. In that one, Slanesh got rolled. But I will say, I strongly disappro disapproved of how the Slanesh handled Nakari. Um, he was too passive. He didn't commit to a fight. And then by the time he did commit to a fight, the game was over. So we'll see if this Exalted Keeper of Secrets gets more involved right away. For the Beastmen, we have a lot of Ungor Herds. Ungor Spirit Herds and Ungor Herds across the front line. Ungor Raiders backing them up. We also have the Destroyers of Drakwald, a bunch of Razor Gorhurs, four Centigors, three of which have Throwing Axes, Butcher's Scout Guard, and then a very Shaman of Wilds of Traitor Kin. Very, very big Beastman army. 2,000 models. Crimson Killers with Fist of Gork versus the Hellforged Host. Who do you think wins? Ah, uh, Crimson Killers. Crimson Killers, sure. With the Fist of Gork. On the other side, we have Chaos Warriors of Slanesh, four of them across the front line. Then three Skirmish Cav, a Cultist of Slanesh with the Demonette Summon, Exalted Keeper Secret of, Sh of Slanesh with Pavane, Lash, and then Ballet of Blows and Seductive Glory. And we have one Chaos Knight. Ooh, there's also a Chosen of Slanesh. I feel really bad for those Ungors. Really, really bad. So Slanesh's front line will win, despite the sheer volume of Beastmen on the field. The Chaos Warriors and Chosen can crush through all of them, if given time. But the Beastmen have superior ranged, obviously, since Slanesh didn't really bring any. Um, the Beastmen have superior range, they have more monstrous infantry, and they have more cavalry running around. So Slanesh will have to get a lot of use out of this Exalted Keeper of Secrets, because she's really the only advantage they have besides their front line. Chaos Knights of Slanesh are going deep to try and peel the uh, throwing axes. But now they are surrounded by basic Centigors, by Razor Gore Herds, and still getting shot by the throwing axes. They take a ton of damage, also from a Traitor Kin. Rampage has started for the Razor Gore Herds, and then another Rampage is cast on the Grok of Wolf's Run. I love the way Rampage is getting used now to just pull Skirmish Cavalry or ranged units into a fight they don't want to be in. It is excellent. We can see here, great, great punish from Captain Tealus. Well done. Taking out the Grog Hooves, which are a very elite Beastman unit. That has nothing to scoff at. That's a good pick. 
But it works both ways. Beastmen lost half health off of a Centigore and a Razorgore, and they lost the Grog Hopes, but Slanesh lost an entire Chaos Knight. So really, this is kind of an even trade. I think Slanesh played well, but they still, you know, lost some stuff. On the front line, exactly what we thought was going to happen is happening. The Chosen and these other Hellscourges are getting straight through those super cheap Beastmen Ungors. It's not much of a problem. Butcher's Calcagard are stuck fighting a Demonette Summon, a Cultist, and Chaos Warriors of Slanesh. They will slowly start to lose this over time. We do have some more Ungors trying to help them out, though. But Slash's front line is doing great. The Beastmen back line is doing fine, though I will say these four archers haven't gotten a ton done just yet, and now they're all clumped up, which could make them a juicy target if the Exalted Keeper Secrets can find a way in there and then rampage all four of them into melee, follow up with, like, a Lash or two or something. We do still have Chaos Warriors lurking around the sides, just coming in. The Beastmen are running out of places to keep these archers alive. Bray Shaman of Wilds going out there for a little bit. Dangerously close to Keeper of Secrets, but he believes in his archers. The four archers will light her up like nobody's business if she actually commits to a long form fight. So she doesn't want that. Beastman Flank is still fine. Their archers are still alive for now. But anything caught out will remain caught out. As the Keeper of Secrets dives in onto the Butchers of Calvin Guard. They do cause terror, so they won't terror out away, but they can still naturally naturally route. Is it Big Trader King? Yeah, Big Trader King. Is it Overcast? It is not Overcast, but it's still really good. Butchers of Calvin Guard are going to route, but the Cult is taking a lot of damage, as is the Exalted Keeper. Marauder Horseman running a little low on ammunition. These Chaos Warriors of Slanesh pushing into the back line, but they'll now get kited and pincushioned by archers who separate out enough that now the shields of those Chaos Warriors can't face all of them at the same time. Marauder Horseman locking this great Bray Shaman in place. He's trying to get out of here with his chariot, but he can't move, and there's the Rampage in from the Keeper of Secrets. Immediately, Seductive Glory is popped. He's down to half HP in the blink of an eye. I don't know if he gets out of there. I don't know if the Beastmen can really come back from this. Bounce Power is sharing my sentiment that it's turning against the Beastmen. And it's not to the point of no return yet, but it's getting there. As archers do manage to push her away, the Exalted Keeper of Secrets wants nothing to do with even basic archers. 15 armor, bronze shield, and then no missile resistance is not a winning recipe for her. Another trader can keeps her taxed down. The Centigors manage to route a Marauder Horseman, but then they get routed in turn by the Exalted Keeper of Secrets. So the archers are still peeling. The archers are still doing very well overall. Centaur is trying to help fight these Chaos Warriors of Slanesh the Hellscourges. That's not an extended fight that they really want. Slanesh pulls further and further ahead of the bounce power. As everything on the Beastmen's... What is this? That is the west side. Everything on the west side over here is falling apart. And the east side is going okay for them, but it's just not going... It's not going well. So when one flank is falling apart, the other side's going okay. You are at a net negative on the game there. Chaos Warriors getting poked down by archers again. Centaur's fighting it out. Other archers have gotten to safety. We still have Marauder Horsemen closing in for the kill. We still have Chosen and other Chaos Warriors coming back as well. And of course, the Exalted Keeper of Secrets herself is at two-thirds HP. Worst professor making jokes at a time like this. Looks like they're going to route off this Chaos Warrior soon, but that won't be enough, as now their Centaurs have fallen apart. Ungor Raiders are getting attacked by Chaos Warriors of Slanesh. And these Marauder Horsemen are just waiting to dive back here and kill these guys off. There's actually nothing stopping them from doing that right now. Exalted Keeper of Secrets takes some damage from another Trader Kin, and Archers are also going to try and punish her. That's just looking like GG. There's no hope. Tier 3 army ability, Fascination, takes half HP off the younger Raiders and pushes them into violence. Another Rampage catches the other ones, and that is army losses. Well played by these two, well played. For Heimdallar's archers had a tough time firing in the early portions of the game, and then by the time they did get firing, a lot of the front line was dead. Santacoras did okay. They had some good engagements. Butchers of Calvin Guard got overextended and killed. Razor Guards actually did pretty well. And then Ungor Herds held for as long as they could be expected to. For Captain Teals, pretty good play around his lord, never overextended or got her killed. He did overextend with his Chaos Knights, and they got punished pretty heavily for that, so that's a bit of a whoopsie, but his Chaos Warrior and Chosen Frontline were enough to hold things together, while his Skirmish Cav got really good values, as did his uh, Exalt Keeper Secrets. That was good stuff. Which faction is the best of chariots? Kislev! 
Kislev, Kislev. Oh, wait, why are Kislev good at chariots? They're not even... They're good at... They have the best chariots. They have the second best knights in the game behind Bretonia. They have the best chariots in the game. They have some of the best artillery in the game. Though I still think Skaven, actually. Skaven Empire probably have better artillery. Dwarves, too, because it's just little ground. But they're up there in artillery. They're up there in one of the best front lines in the game. They have one of the best blobs in the game. And they have one of the best lures of magic in the game. So if you're wondering why Kislev is S tier, take your fucking pick, dude. <laughs> they have so much stuff. CD is basically SE chariots. Okay, yeah, but actually Kislev bear chariots are way better than Chaos Dwarf chariots, in my in my uh, opinion. I paused it because both of these guys just ran at each other right away. For the Dark Elves, we have Dark Riders on a flank. Three Cold One Knights on the other side. Actually, hold on. I was talking to you guys. I didn't announce who we're, doing, we're catching here. We have a uh, Nerd versus Stittler. Now, to any astute watchers, this is not Dr. Nerd. This is just Nerd. There's, there's two different people. We have Nerd and Stittler. Beastmen and Dark Elves. I forgot, I, I forgot to mention who was playing, and I feel, that felt incredibly rude, so... I thought I would go back and figure out. Anyway, for Stittler, we do have three Cold One Knights, three Dark Riders, a whole front line of the new Witch Elves, which I think overall are nerfed, but they did get a use of Witch Brew, which can do a lot of damage. They just lost their uh, they lost their Rampage passive. And then we do have Malekith, Soul Sealer, Stand Your Ground on, bat on the back of his dragon. For the beastmen, we have an Ungor herd front line with four Ungor, nope, three Ungor raiders backing them up, a beast caster, a flock of doom, and the amber spear. The Vorgablar, Gablar, Gablar, Broodmother, ROR, Morgan the Shadow gave two Minotaurs with shields and two harpies in this guy. Spartan, don't judge your build too much, please. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna judge the shit out of it. So witch elves, especially if they pop their witch brew, are about to absolutely slaughtered these Ungors. It is not even going to be close. I don't see their Witch Brews getting popped just yet. This looks like they're holding on to them for now. Any Dark Elf mains out there want to tell me why you'd bother holding on to them? I feel like you'd want to use them while you're still alive and get through that front line faster. But I know some players don't use them right away. Good Breath Attack might route off an entire Ungor Raider there, and it does. The Ungor front line is already losing to the Witch Elves heading for the hills. It's a good start. Good start here. Elsewhere, how are the flanks doing? Vargablar, Gablar, Gablar, and Spearman taking a fight with Cold One Knights, doing a lot of damage to them. My god. And Minos are out here trying to catch some Dark Riders, but it's not really going their way. Yeah, the front line is just a disaster for the poor old uh, Beastmen. Witch Elves popping their Witch Brew, trying to fight with Morgur. Malkith also lands, though he's getting shot by some archers. And Amber Spear is going to try and hit him in the back. It skips through a couple infantry units, which is the correct usage of that spell. And now Chaos Spawn Summon is out as a Soul Sealer, plus an attack from Malkith might actually route Morgur here soon. We'll have to see. Dark Riders are getting caught in with some Minos and some uh, Harpies. Elsewhere, the Varga Blarga Blarga Blar is still terrorizing these poor Cold Knights. My god. But the uh, Sisters Singing Doom with their terror causing do get rid of some of the Beastmen infantry around. So one of our Chaos Spawn is here, though they're already taking significant damage. The Monitors have rejoined, and this uh, poor Bray Shaman Beast is also inundated with Cold One Knights. The Morgur's second spawn takes itself out of Witch Elves. And a rear charge from Varga Blarga Blark could actually turn this into a good fight for the Beastmen. They're getting good damage down. And these guys are starting to get affected by that Mortis engine, the Aura of Madness, because their leadership is dipping a little bit. Now, the Beastman Balance Power is inflated by two Chaos Spawn Summons out, so we do have to keep that in mind. But they really have turned some things around since a disastrous early game. You have Dark Riders in the back trying to finish off Ungor Raiders, which is good. But Witch Elves are getting rear charged. I just saw a Breath Attack onto more Ungor Raiders. Yeah, they're getting going. But all of these Dark Elves are overcrowded, and they're getting hit with a big ol' Flock of Doom. So if the Shadows Caster, uh, the Beast Caster can just keep spamming a flock of zooms, he's going to be fine. And the three very expensive Cold Knights have taken a ton of damage from various sources. 
I guess, as they're fighting Minos right now. One of the spawn summons is gone. The other one only has 25 seconds left to him as Malekith and the Witch Elves route off everything. So Beastmen have lost most of their random infantry, including their archers, but their single entities are pretty operational. Their Minotaurs are very healthy. Can the Sisters of Singing Doom help carry the Dark Elves? Or will the Minobus prevail on the side of uh, the old beasties? We still have a Witch Brew for the Sisters of Singing Doom, and I really want them to just pop it and get extra damage out here. Malkis still trying to uh, snipe out Morgur as a Flock of Doom hits the rest of the Dark Elves again. Beastmen are pulling further ahead on the balance of power. And the Sisters are now under attack by Minos. They gotta, they gotta pop it. Pop that Witch Brew. There's no reason not to. Use it. Use it! Give in to your hate! Amber Spear hits the Varga Blarga Blar in the back, but uh, Amber Spear, by the way, does not do a lot of damage. It just doesn't. It does some damage to infantry if you fire down the side, but never use it on a single entity. It doesn't do anything. Witch Elves finally use their Witch Brew, getting that extra damage out as they start to cleave through these Minos who are not enjoying that attention whatsoever. Morgur's Heal Cap is in sight, and the Dark Elves are coming right back on the balance of power. Big Flock of Doom that hits everybody, but I wonder is it followed up by a Soul Stealer to also hit everybody? Minos are routing off. One is already leaving, the other one's just starting to leave now, and Cold Knights are sweeping them up. Ungor Raiders are trying to turn and fire at the Cold Knights, but Malekith looks like he is on top of that, diving into those guys to get rid of them and save his Cold Knights, but also keep the Minotaurs from coming back for now. The Varga Blarga Blarga Blar is also moving out there to rear charge those guys, and that might route them off. Meanwhile, Morgur is getting routed. Another Amber Spear is out onto Malekith. It just doesn't do any damage. The Amber Spear is not a spell to be used on uh, single entities. It is unfortunate, but true. So the Dark Elves won that central fight. The Varga Blarga Blar is trying to come back and maybe get a pick a pick a fight with Malekith. We'll see if that ends up mattering. Another nice flock of doom on the Sisters of Singing Doom. And the Dark Elves are largely down to Malekith and the Sisters of Singing Doom. Everything else is so damaged or so cheap that it doesn't really matter. For the Beastmen, they still technically have a caster. They have some disparate Ungor Raiders that can come back and offer a bit of fire. We have some Minos who are charging downhill into Dark Riders to try and get them off of Morgur, who is still regenerating up if he can escape the Dark Riders. And the Varga Blar immediately gets rid of a Cold One Knight. Archers get rid of another Witch Elf. And big rear charge from the Varga Blar. This is what you usually see Jabber Sites for. They are just amazing at clearing out infantry with those charge bonuses. So say goodbye to the Sisters of Singing Doom, and it is quickly becoming the Malekith show. Can he solo carry? Is this fall of last year, or is it two years ago? The Malekith. Malekith and Imric came into the meta. Morgur is trying to regenerate up as he runs away, and Furious plus Minos will sandwich in the Helobroni and should easily route them so that Morgur can come back. But it looks like Malekith has taken a special interest in this fight. Doesn't really want to fight the Varka Blarka Blarka Blar just yet. Doesn't see a point in that. Minos have got here. They're pushing around the Hellebroni and say goodbye to those Hellebroni, which means say hello to Morka coming back. For the Dark Elves, we have some Cold Knights that'll come back for a brief second before dying, and another one that's very, very low, and this is just thing you do we're trying to get their shit back together. Malekith is ignoring the plight of the Halibroni, leaving them to their fate. Instead, going for the Lord Snipe on Morgur, who's now up to 22 leadership. He would come back if there wasn't a giant dragon chasing his ass down. Hi, uh, McRight face. Two big charge attacks and Morgur is dead and gone. Beastmen losing their leadership, losing their heart. Can they hold together? Because if Malekith gets left alone, he sucks at fighting lots of things at the same time. Most dragon lords do. But look at how low they are. Like, this Mino is going to break as soon as he looks at him wrong. Ungor heard too. Sister Singing Doom and the Cold Knights finish off some Harpies in the distance. And I do think the Dark Elves are going to clutch it out. The Varga Blar is just not an amazing duelist. It's not really meant to be. It's really good at a lot of other things. But Malekith's a better duelist, and he has Soul Stealer to heal himself up and damage the Varga Blar. I think he's got it. It's your birthday, McBrightface? That's great, dude. There's a lot of birthdays hitting. A lot of birthdays in the community. Hell yeah, brother. All right, Malekith is flying overhead, regrouping with the Dark Elf forces. I will just fast forward briefly as we get the confrontation here. 
Nice little breath attack from Malkith. Is going to route off those Ungors, it looks like. No, they'll hang on for now. The Vargablar on the charge should take out the Sisters of uh, Singing Doom and the Coldwood Knights. They should both be gone, and then we'll leave us with just Malekith. There go the Coldwood Knights. Sisters clinging to life, and Stand Your Ground gave him enough leadership to really stay in it. And now Malekith landing on the Minos should take them out, should take the Ungor Herd out too. And here comes the Vargablar looking to try and fight for her freedom. Charges through the Sisters of Singing Doom. On to Malekith, gets a big landing attack onto him. He actually attacks the Minotaurs instead of her. So for now, she's getting damage out for free. Gets her Mortis Engine onto some of these passing by units. But there's the Soul Stealer we're worried about. It means Malekith's going to heal, and she takes some extra damage. This is just singing Doom charge up, but uh, charges work both ways, and they get pushed away. One leadership left on them as they get slowly drained to death. Malekith does land back down. Everything is shattered away for the Dark Elves. Now it is just Malekith versus the Vorgablund. While the Ungor Herd tries to come back and offer a little bit of aid. Colden Knights might also return to the fight, but who knows. Alright, Vargablar is fighting back in Malekith. Now it does sunder his armor, which is something I didn't take into account. So he's down to 60 armor, which means the Ungor Herds could actually maybe try and get a little bit of damage out. But the bounce powers are shifting too far against the Beastmen, because, like, Malekith can beat the Vorgablund Broodmother. Which, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. He, he should. He should beat it. He's struggling a bit here against this ROR, but I think when his next Soul Stealer's up, it's just GG automatically. As it tries to fight back, kind of jabs him in the face. There's the Soul Stealer. So with the bounce power as low as it is, with her health going down from the Soul Stealer and his going up from healing, that should just army loss her any second now. There it is. GG. Flock of Doom, Caster 2100 value. Varga Blarga Blarga Bar 3100. Minotaurs did okay. They struggled through the value back. Uh, Harpies did okay as well. Ungor Raiders struggled, but Malkith gave him some pretty nasty breath attacks down the side. For Stittler, Malkith for 3500 value. 1500 in Sisters of Singing Doom. Other Witch Elves, more mixed, but overall good. Cold Knights, a little more mixed, overall bad. Hellebroni and Dark Riders, mixed, but fine. Some good games tonight, lads. Some good games. All right, saving a game from Captain Tealus. Saving a game from Electric Spinach. And while we load in the next one, I will take a look at the bracket. Looks like everybody's done with round two. Some people are working on round three. Eh, not everyone's done for round two. We still have Mel and Tummel. Game three here is between uh, Lowry and Surprise. This is game four. This might be game four. Perhaps yeah, even five. Lowry and Surprise. Empire and Dwarves. Got ourselves a bit of an art artillery shootout. One cannon and a flame cannon with some quarrelers backing them up. Longbeard's a great weapon. Slayers, Dwarf Warriors, Minus Blast, Charge in the front line. Thoric Double Thane. And that is that. On the other side, as you can see, the fireworks display coming in. We do have the Sunmaker plus another Hellstrom Rocket Battery. Empire Swordsman, Great Swords, Boris Toddbringer, Reichsguard, and then Outriders Grenade Launchers. No caster on the side of the Empire, which I will say it every single time because I always think it is true, but it is just a mistake. There's no reason not to take a caster, so you probably should do it. Even against the dwarves, they have spell resistance, but I mean, like, it's only 35%. You might as well still take it. Cannon's starting to fire back against the Sunmaker, but the Quarrelers get taken out by the Outriders while paired up with the Sunmaker's damage that's coming in. And the tight Dwarven formation is getting punished really hard by these Rocket Batteries right now. Already we've lost a Cannon, a Miner, and a Quarreler. That is some brutal stuff. As the dwarves charge forward to try and get into melee combat with the Empire, where they might have a bit more of a chance, 
Flame Cannons are trying to get their medium range into range of the uh, Hellstorm Rock Batteries and get something done. But it's going to be a tough go. Boris lands on these Blinders Blasting Charges just to distract them so they don't throw at the Swordsman. Because look at the damage these guys do when they do throw at Swordsman. Okay, never mind. Get a half volley because that just makes me look like an asshole then. That's fine. Whatever. Slayers are trying to run down the Outriders with Grenade Launchers. The Dwarves are getting kayated. Empire Knights charged into these Minus Blasting Charges. Across the front line, the, the Empire did a really good job of stopping the Blasting Charges from being able to throw. And the Dwarves have just been on the back foot this whole game. They are having a bad time. Rune of Speed gives them a bit more melee attack so they can punch through that front line a little bit faster. And this Flame Cannon is now in range of the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. They have wandered up into these Swordsmen, but they are determined to fire at the Hellstorm Rocket Battery come hell or high water. Where is the other Outrider Grenade Launcher? There it is in the backfield. They're trying to run down some Slayers. Oh, that's just an Outrider regular. Okay, okay. That's cool. Boris is in, a, in over a little, uh, in over his head a little bit as Thoric is showing up along with Miners and Dwarf Warriors and such. Another Hellstorm Rock Battery Volley trying to get the Quarrelers. I'm kind of surprised they're not punishing some of these Blobs, but I guess the Friendly Fire might be too great. Outriders grenade launchers do get caught by the Slayers, which is a bit of a whoopsie. They start to path away, and the Flame Cannon did push off one of the Hellstorm Rock Batteries as these fucking Chads are standing in the Empire front line like, nah, fuck you, I'm busy, and just firing away at the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. I love it. That's my new favorite thing. Thoric is fighting back against Boris, and Boris does need to opt out of here, get back in the sky and refresh his charge bonus, or at least just not fight next to... Oh no, next to Slayers. Oh, this is bad. He's got to go. Boris has got to go. He's taking big damage. He's got to run. The Sunmaker is trying to save itself from Slayers, but the Slayers are coming. The other Hellstorm Rock Batter is trying to get back online while Reichsguard are going to rear charge the Slayers. Other Empire Knights are charging these Dwarf Warriors, but the tenacity of the Dwarves is not something to be underestimated. Meanwhile, Corollers are back, and they're both shooting at this Outrider that's just trying to get that front line to finally break. Boris is trying to get back in this guy. It looks like the Dwarves are going to let him, realizing he's much faster. And Outriders Grenade Launcher is still trying to peel off these Dwarf Warriors. Slayers, only six models left. The Reichsguard are doing their jobs and saving the Imperial artillery pieces. This Hellstorm Rock Battery is back online. Three out of four models still up and alive. We'll see what they can do as the Dwarves are closing in. The frontline fight appears to still be quite contested, but the Dwarves are kind of starting to eke out around the sides and get onto that backfield a little bit more. Boris lands on the Slayers, which is a bold strategy, but I think he's trying to cluster them up for the Hellstorm Rocket Battery that's firing in right about now. We'll see how much that does, though Hellstorm Rocket Batteries that aren't the Sunmaker are generally a little underwhelming in my experience. Flame Cannon is still online in all of this chaos, firing away without a crew to speak of. Oh my god, it has 600 HP and it's just sitting in the Imperial front line, fucking firing away. It doesn't give a single shit that Elster Rocket Battery is actually about to rout oh, from the Flame Cannon that's just out here like a legend. It's my favorite. It's my it's my favorite thing in the whole world. All right, Outriders on the backfield finally pushed off as Corollers are back and fire again, but the Great Swords of the Empire are going to be a problem. They're still very, very healthy, and they're cleaving through dwarves like there's no tomorrow. Dwarf Warriors and Miners are trying to rejoin the fight and rear charge some of these Imperials. And on the back line, Slayers caught the Outriders Grenade Launchers, which is a pretty big loss for the Empire. And they're just taking too much damage. I think the Slayers should be able to finish them off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The Sunmaker is trying to get back online. It looks like it is, but it only has one volley left, so I guess if it gets that shot off, then big whoop, big diff. While we still have the, fa the Flame Cannon of Legend routes the Hellstorm Rocket Battery again and continues firing. Isn't the Super Dwarf favored? It used to be Turtle Punch in Warhammer 2. In Warhammer 3, uh, the Empire Greatswords have gotten some serious buffs. Outriders Grand Launchers are really strong. And the Dwarves have taken some nerfs here and there. Um, so it, it, it's it's much more even. It was our Faction War Finals for actually this last Faction War that just came. As the Flame Cannon now turns its ire onto the Sunmaker and lands dead center. The Sunmaker figures its shit out and fires back. Oh, that was so close to being some serious friendly fire. But overall, the Sunmaker crew earns its elite status and hits only dwarves. Getting rid of a dwarf warrior and a miner pretty much off the bat. 
Dwarves are still about even in bounce power, but they're slipping just behind a little bit. Flame Cannon's still firing away as the Thane takes the fight to, Th to Boris, who has healed up on his own now. I wonder where his heal cap is, but it can't be too far off. Is that, uh, that Sunmaker Volley's going a little more friendly fire direction as the Great Swords and Swordsmen take the brunt of that punishment before it runs away with no ammo and the Dwarf Warriors and Slayers are able to peel off the Reichsguard and Empire Knights. Pretty big wins there for the Empire. And the Flame Cannon still pushes forward. It has four out of four bottles, but the crew is dead on all but one of the bottles. So we have a stealth Flame Cannon rolling through here, and the Reichsguard are going to go right past it because they don't even know it's there because the flag is way over here. They have no idea that the Flame Cannon is just sneaking past them. Go, Flame Cannon, go. <laughs> All right, Boris routed off one of the Thanes. He hits the other one in the face. He's going to get it to route, uh, route any second now. And Thoric is kind of the last strength of the dwarves, but this flame cannon's going out here. As the Outriders grenade launchers see it, they see the cannon. No, no, dear God, it's not possible. Oh, they just, they're fine. They're chilling. Uh, that guy's getting dragged along while he fell down. That's fine, but he's back because these dwarf wars are going to peel for him. But that flame can is getting to safety. He is definitely over chasing the Sunmaker. He needs to turn that thing around and fire up this giant clump of Empire State troops. The Slayers get into the fight. Thoric still in there. And some blasting charges throw at the Imperial State troops. We have other dwarves starting to rally around the map. Flame Cannon, come back! Flame Cannon, they're off the map! They don't matter! Flame Cannon, please! <laughs> turn around! Turn around! Bro, <laughs> shoot at the block. Shoot at the giant blob of state troops, please. Because it, it has, getting shot by artillery is a debuff, but also the flame cannon has burnt, so it has two leadership debuffs that actually could just, like, route this entire thing. It's turning! It's fucking turning! Boris's heel cap, let's go! Flame cannon! Fire! Fire, you stupid fuck! The Outriders fire at it. In the distance, there's the shot. It's a big shot. It routes that swordsman. It maybe routes a great sword. There's the shot. <laughs> Boris is flying at it. No, no, leave it alone. Don't kill it. You fuck. No. They were so beautiful as they route off some more great swords. As they maybe run off the swordsmen who are burnt. Boris is trying to, to... Not Boris. Uh, Thoric is trying to hold. He's getting rid of so many things. But Boris did finally finish off the flame cannon that could. All the Empire is routing except for Boris. Who is officially heal capped. And these great swords. Are they going to route to... Thoric did not bring Rune of Wrath and Ruin. I love Rune of Wrath and Ruin. I think it's undervalued by a lot of people. Here is the Rune of Doom. Causing fear, which might get those great swords to route. But here comes Boris. Can Thoric and the Thane team up on him? Now, we saw how much damage Boris took last time he dueled with Thoric, but Thoric did have Slayers back then. Now he has a Thane, which is actually still pretty spooky. It's still pretty spooky as we see Boris taking big old chunks out of his health bar. Thane is going to route, unfortunately for him, but Thoric is here, ready to kick some ass, and Boris has lost about 2,000 HP before our eyes. Still taking big damage as Thoric beats his ass into the dirt, and the second Thane is returning to the fight, maybe going to rear charge his great swords. Boris opts out, but he has no more healing to gain, so all he gets back from this is, of course, his charge bonus. I still think pulling away was the smart decision there. Just saying, it's not like he's getting up in the sky to, to heal or anything. Outriders Grenade Launcher is trying to peel off this Thane who's doing his best to dodge while Thoric just sits in the Greatswords and then fights his way out. Boris is going to land on this poor Thane who just wants to get back to his Lord's side. He takes a big old shot to the face and a follow-up will kill him. Say goodbye. But Thoric has a bone to pick with you, sir. And the Outriders Grenade Launchers are doing more friendly fire than they are actually damaging Thoric. I think Thoric's best strategy right now is to get back into the middle of his, as many Empire State troops as he can and let those Outriders just kill him for him. 
Reich's guard charge back in, only to go right out. And if they route, they might do the nearby ally as routing debuff. That could actually cause a bit of a chain reaction in the Empire here. We lose the Swordsman just like that. Great swords are thinking about it. This swordsman thinking about it. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a Rune of Wrath and Ruin right now. Rune of Speed giving Thoric more melee attack. Though it's not more weapon strength. And he's actually trying to path through the Empire State Troops to get to his Thane. There's no shot you do that. Like, you're not going to get to him. You might as well just kill this stuff before Boris shows up. Because you got to route these guys off so Boris has to 1v1 you. We've seen how poorly that goes for Boris. You don't really want to fight him on top of his own troops. That just seems like a rough time. So close to getting rid of these great swords and swordsmen. But they're holding for now as some of them start to shatter off. Boris is coming back in for another cycle charge. Does Thoric have his rune of negation up? It looks like he does. Did he just cancel it? What happened there? He was trying to cast something. There he goes. Rune of negation plus 40% damage resistance as he fights back. I don't think he's swinging at Boris right now, which now that Boris has landed, you need to kick his ass. So you shouldn't try to path through to get to Boris when he was out of reach. But now that he's here, yeah, hit him. All right, he's gone. He's gone. Let him go. Kill the swordsman while he's leaving. Oh, Rune of Wrath and Ruin. You just, you got to take it. You just got to take it, you guys. He causes fear now, and the fear causes a lot of things to rout. Greatsword's also going to get going. And all of a sudden, most of the Empire support is gone. Boris is trying to land on Thoric right now. He's doing that dumb thing where flying units sometimes just hover around instead of actually landing. But his Greatswords are getting low. Other Greatswords are rejoining the fight, and Thoric is still grinding it out. As Boris dives in yet again. This time he successfully lands, which means Thoric can actually turn around and kick his ass, maybe. As another Greatsword routes, a Swordsman is going to follow the Greatswords off the map. No, it doesn't look like it just yet. As Thoric turns, he still hasn't swung at Boris in a while, I don't think. And if he did, he misses. There he gets a shot onto Boris. And now Boris opts out again. Again, let him go. Let him go. Kill the Greatswords. Kill the Greatswords. While he's leaving, kill him. Because you got to get rid of that extra support. Now, Thoric actually has as much health as Boris right now. Even though their health bars, Boris looks a little higher. It's because it's a percentage, right? But Thoric... Being a dwarf has higher base HP. All right, he got through a lot of state troops. Now Boris is landing again. Again, you have to turn and just fight Boris whenever he lands on you, as much as it sucks. Like, he's faster than you, so you can't really chase him. He gets the pick. Boris got, like, two or three big hits in a row there. Rune of Speed to give Thoric a little bit better stats here. But it's not defensive stats. He's taking a lot of damage from Boris, but now he's starting to give it back. It, it always goes this way. When Boris lands, he does a bunch of stuff. But if Thoric gets to swing back, he gets good damage. But Boris is still hitting over and over and over again. That charge bonus is doing really big work for him. But Thoric is evening it up, man. Thoric pulls ahead on HP all of a sudden. And Boris is leaving again. we got to get rid of some of these state troops somehow. As Thoric is plowing through him again. He's waiting for Rune of Doom to come off cooldown. That fear will get rid of some of these guys. Because he doesn't cause fear on his own. And he really wants that Rune of Negation to come off cooldown again. But... Boris is back in, and that charge might just do it as Thoric's HP and leadership are getting too low to sustain him. 1,000 HP left, down to 700 as Boris keeps getting those hits in. Boris himself is down to 600 HP. Thoric's actually ahead on HP. Oh, but army losses takes him. I don't think that that was army losses worthy. That was silly. Flame Cannon got great value. Thoric got amazing value. The Thanes both paid for them. Well, I guess combined, they paid for themselves. Um, Slayers did fine. Cannon got rolled immediately. Dwarf Warriors did fine. Myers of Blast and Charges also got kind of rolled. Very good game here from Blowery and Surprise. That was an awesome time. I want to cast that game. I want to cast that game. I don't feel like I can capture the energy, though, so I'll probably just make a note to myself to clip this part of the live stream. Because that was... That was so fun, man. Clip new player stream Dowie M. Because that's, that's worth its own video, man. That was so cool. Alright, I got a bunch of messages. Stitler with the BC versus Empire. 2Y, 2Y. I gotta go through and save a bunch of things. Everybody stay calm. Ba, 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 ba. 
Let's get the next game loading. Teddy Spaghetti versus the th uh, Thrack the Twins. Teddy Spaghetti versus Thrack the Twins. All right, Dark Elves, Ogre Kingdoms. Theodore Spaghetti. For the Ogre Kingdoms, we have Lead Belchers, the Sky Striders, Noblars and Noblar Trappers. We also have some Mornfang Cab with Iron Fist, a whole bunch of Ogre Bulls, Saber Chest Packs, and a Slaughtermaster of the Great Maul with just Troll Guts for his heal. On the other side, for the Dark Elves, we have two Dark Rider Peter Crossbows. We have four Dark Shards, two Bloodrack Medusas, a Firecaster with Piercing Bolts of Burning and Burning Head, Black Heart Corsairs and Dread Spears as a frontline, and Malice, Mother Flippin' Dark Blade. On Spite. Hey, Hot Fire Potato. I cast one of your games for the channel. It's not, uh, it's not out yet, but like, it's on the, you know, it's on the upcoming list. Dark Riders going for a bit of a jaunt, trying to find somewhere to get some good key shots in on the Ogres. And the Ogres also have a Scrap Launcher. Isn't this white line abuse? Uh, it would be if he was playing defensively, but he's moving up, so it's fine. Yeah, but if he sat back there, sure, Desire Drive, that would be, that would be a problem, but he's coming. He's moving up. Oh lord, he coming. The repeater crossbows were shooting at some stuff, and then what they were shooting at went out of range, so they have lost their orders now. They'll need new ones, but I'm sure the Dark Elves are busy organizing their main force on the advance over here. And this is one of the higher level strategies that I don't usually see in new player tournaments, but Berserk does it to me all the time. If you watch my best of five with him, which was a 0-3, spoiler alert... Um, you'll see every single game he didn't deploy front and center, and then he came in at an angle, and it makes the ogres have to pivot, and if you don't pivot perfectly like they didn't, look at all this shit that's way out of position. Like, these Noblars, these ogre bulls are trying to get to the fight, and the fight's already started over here, so, like, if you can execute this well, it's really good to come out of your opponent from an angle, but it's hard, because you also, you also have to do that. You have to pivot your forces correctly and get a full engagement, which the Dark Elves did here, but I'm just saying, you can't just waddle in like a dumbass and you're like well i came in at an angle so i'm winning it's like no you also have to create a winning scenario for yourself burning head plus dark shards peel off a lot of the noblars and now the sky striders are taking a ton of damage from the dark shards and malice jumping in on them while the medusas try and punish their escapes overall a very good moment for the dark elves there the Nava Scrap Launcher is wreaking some havoc on the Dark Elf back line, and the Dark Elf front line is falling apart under the Oak Kingdom's pressure. We have some Ogre Bulls here that, once they're finished with those Black Dark Corsairs and these Dread Spears, they need to come up here and just make a day out of killing these Dark Shards while they can, before Malice and the Blood Rack Medusas come back for them. Piercing Bolts of Burning onto the Noblar Trappers forces them to run away. And in the back, we still have Sky Striders and Mornfang Cab with Iron Fist and Saber Dust Packs. Saber Dust Packs caught the repeater crossbows it looks like but the other mourn fangs and sky striders just need to come over here and do some stuff because currently they're sitting around doing nothing ogre bulls trying to get peeled by malice right now but they have made the dark shards run which frees up the other ogre bulls to get in here start killing off some stuff fighting the blood rack medusas and whatnot lead belchers moving up they are now stuck shooting at medusas which they really don't like shooting single entities they can if they have to but it's not their forte so, they're not going to get a lot of damage out there. But the Ogre Bulls are going to run away from Malice. Happy enough to have just pushed the Dark Shards back for now and forced them to reposition. But the Blood Rock Reduces are, are uh, wrecking some Boglars of the, bad, of the Mad Marshes. Quick Burning Head should kill this Noblar. Doesn't do too much to the Ogre Bulls, but it should get rid of that Noblar easily enough. And Malice keeps taking a fight with the Ogres. Elsewhere, the Sky Striders are coming back. Sabertooth Packs still chasing around the uh, Repeater Crossbows. Same with the Mornfang Cab with Iron Fist, spending most of the time chasing around Skirmish Cab. And those Medusas are going to be a problem. Ogre Bulls once again find a way into the Dark Shards, which is great for them. The Medusas are trying to peel them off with their missile attacks, but their, their missile attacks don't do too much to large targets. 
their melee does amazing versus large targets, but um, Sky Striders are here. And what are they trying to attack? They're trying to attack the Medusa. Let's see how well they do, because sometimes Crushers surround a target and do incredible damage to it. Sometimes they just pile up on it and let like one thing swing at a time. Looks like they gave up on chasing that Medusa and instead go for another one, getting a downhill charge onto it. Meanwhile, Malice is out here fighting Ogre Bulls, which he'll win. That's fine. This is more of the second scenario where the Sky Striders just like kind of touch it and then don't do much. Looks like they're going to go for the Dark Shards instead. And they got a big heal. Looks like it was either a Butcher or a Troll Guts. I'm guessing a Butcher. This is probably the end of the Dark Shards, though, as more Ogre Bulls are coming in. The Sky Striders already have these guys frostbitten, so they can't move very fast. That's going to be all the Dark Shards down, so we'll see what comes of it. Sky Striders, though, going back and forth between the Blood Rack Medusa. And so far, their charges on the Blood Rack have not been too successful. So I wonder if this is worth their time or if they should just focus on making sure those Dark Shards don't come back at all. Sky Strider's starting to get some actual damage done. To the Blood Racks. Can they finish them off? Ogre Bulls getting caught up in some Dread Spears. Need to focus on those Dark Shards, especially the ones that are rallying in the distance. Because you can chase them off, you can also get a lot of kills and get more Ogres passive. Sky Striders get another Troll Guts, though they already healed a bunch, so I wonder where that heal cap is. It's probably just around the corner. It's gotta be coming soon. Yeah, the Ogre Bulls are paying dearly for not routing off those Dark Shards as the Dark Shards rally, turn around, and kill the shit out of them. And now you have a Dark Shard problem. More Ogre Bulls are going for those Dark Shards, and if the Dark Shards don't turn fast enough, which it looks like they're not, the Ogre Bulls should get to them, but still, unfortunately, a missed opportunity for the Ogre Kingdoms in the back line. In the front line, the Sky Striders are doing great. They're killing both of the Blood Rack Reduces. They have a Massacre on top of them right now, which gives them terror, but also mostly it's like 25% more damage for them. And Malice is starting to hunt down that Slaughter Master. He has to be careful. The Slaughter Master is slower than Malice and way less good of a duelist. Way, way, way less good. Malice looks like he's going to give up on that and instead take the fight with the Sky Striders for now. Dark Shards saving themselves from the Ogre Bulls in the back line. Can they come back and be effective as Malice is going to chase the Sky Striders around? Warnfang Cav with Iron Fists. They were in the distance for the longest time, but they're here now. Looks like they've been fighting Dread Spears in our absence. I would readily like for the Lead Belchers to finish off those Dread Spears, but eh, this is a good target. Dark Rider Peter Crossbows are a solid target for Lead Belchers. Much better than a single entity, so. Cool, they're shattered. Now shoot those Dread Spears and get rid of them all. The Warnfang Cav with Iron Fists deal with uh, Malice and the Dark Shards. The Crushers. I keep seeing him give a t movement orders over here. That is the correct play because this is the this is the worst of both worlds. There we go. There we go. If he didn't want to fight Malice, he wanted to stop the Dark Shards. If he dragged Malice in range of the Dark Shards and then took the fight anyway, that would just be horrible. But he is trying to get over here. He's trying to shut down the Dark Shards, which is the correct play. How's the tournament going? I'm stuck at work. It's going pretty good. It's going pretty darn good. A lot of great games today. Slaughtermaster and his boys chasing down a Blood Rack Medusa. Sky Striders and the Ogre, uh, the Mornfang Cap with Iron Fist chasing down more Dark Shards. But Malice is a problem, and he's not going away. Lead Belchers did get rid of those Dread Spears. Another route for the Dark Shards. All these Dark Shards have to be close to Shattering. Like, they've been routed so many times. Ogre Bulls are back in. The Blood Rack Medusa is currently getting shot by Lead Belchers in the face. Scrap Puncher says he's firing at something. Well, I guess he's maybe trying to shoot at the routing Dread Spears. Malice hasn't even hit his first heal cap. Much less his second heal cap, wherever that is. And the Dark Shards have rallied for the last time on this flank. We'll see if these Ogre Bulls can make sure those other ones keep routing. And the Sky Striders plus the Saber Tusk Pack is going to run down this Blood Rack Medusa. Take a little bit of friendly fire from their lead belchers. Bit of a whoops. These guys uh, need to stop trying to help because they are just hurting. While these two sides regroup, I am going to times two speed for just a brief moment here. Slaughtermaster is AFK. He looks like he's realized it now and he's trying to run away, but Malice is closing in on him. And what can they get done? The Mornfang Cav and the Crushers are trying to get down here, but the Slaughtermaster's taking damage. Lead Belchers, this is good, this is good, I like this. Lead Belchers shooting at the Dread Spears to just make sure they don't rejoin the fight, it's not their problem. I think the Scrap Launcher and the Lead Belchers should also route the Dark Shards and just, like, have every melee unit that's left go deal with this. Because I don't know if you want to take free damage from the Dark Shards while you charge at them. Piercing Bolts of Burning tries to catch the Crushers, but it looks like they force path past Malice to get out of that spell. 
and they'll be okay. Crusher's trying to ignore Malice and go after the Firecaster. She is faster than them, 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 so once their charge bonus wears off, they'll be okay. Sky Striders get big damage onto Malice. Still, his first healing cap isn't even in sight yet, which is extremely concerning to me. Now, he's going to take some big damage, but he can turn and transform into a spooky, scary demon monster, which looks like he's just going to go ahead and do, and then he should pop both of his, his damage spells. Yeah, and that's a lot of damage. Can the Stry Sky Striders hold on? I am concerned. Zarkian gets a big shot on the Slaughtermaster. The Sky Striders are thinking about routing. They're not ITP. They only cause fear. Seven leadership. They managed to hold on somehow. Oh, I guess Zarkan doesn't cause terror either. I guess I thought that he did. Here comes a Piercing Bolts of Burning. Can the Ogres dodge it or do they even try to? It doesn't look like they're going to try to, which means they're going to take a lot of damage. Piercing Bolts of Burning does a ton to units clumped up like that. Oh, that is probably GG. Sky Striders and the Mournfang Cav get decimated and destroyed. Slaughtermaster tries to heal himself up as some Sabertooth packs are coming back into the fray. But nothing can kill Tazarkan now. Sabertooth packs are eating him alive. Scrap Launch is just harassing the Sorceress of Fire for a bit. But none of this matters, man. Sky Striders, 64 HP in one model. Mournfang Cav with Iron Fist, three models, 700 HP. Sabertooth Pack's actually kind of beaten up on Malice pretty good. There's another Bloodstorm. It might take out the Boglars. I think his next Reaper of Souls should probably end this game. There's the heal cap for the Slaughtermaster. But Reaper of Souls will do good damage to Sabertooth Pack. It might get them actually routing. Lead Belchers have three volleys left. They're trying to find an angle in Malice. Zarkan's actually taken a lot of damage from these Sabertooths. Holy crap. Yeah, they're chewing him up! Go, Sabertusk, go! There's that Reaper of Souls I was concerned about, though. It drains down all three of these targets and heals up Malice. But can these Sabertusks do it? And the Lead Belchers actually get a pretty good volley in that honestly hit Malice more than the Sabertusks, which is not something you get to say very often. Firecaster is coming back to the fight like, I thought this shit was over. It's Zarkan, what are you doing? Finish off these Sabertusks, but the Sabertusks don't give a shit. They're fighting at the very end. The Slaughtermaster rejoins the fight to give them a little bit more leadership, but also just to lend aid to this battle. Zarkan's taking big damage. Sabertusk packs don't rout, though. They need you. The Ogres desperately need you. You can't give up now as the Light Belchers are firing at the Sorcerers of Fire, getting good little damages here and there. Bloodstorm, a little bit more damage on the Sabertooth packs, but they're courageous. They're holding for now, and the Light Belchers are still trying to line up a shot. The Sorcerers of Fire is going to charge into them, and holy shit, can the Slaughtermaster and the boys take down Malice? I didn't think it was possible as the Light Belchers try and take a fight with the Sorcerers of Fire in melee, but she's going to run away from them. That's fine and dandy. I don't think the Light Belchers have too much else to do with their time. Sabertooth packs getting real low in leadership. They go to zero. And they route! No, without the Saber Tusk, there's no hope! Lead Belch just turn. They're trying to fire at Tazarkat. Only 1500 HP for him, but it is slowly climbing, and he has another Reaper of Souls soon that'll heal them up and do damage. This Lead Belcher volley has to count. It does about 500 HP. It does about 600 HP. Some pretty good stuff. The Slaughtermaster's still getting shots in, but where are the Saber Tusks when you need them most? They're rallying the fucking Sky Striders are back! Never mind, they shattered, but whatever, they tried. Malice is still fighting with the Slaughtermaster. Can he do it? The Lead Belchers are trying to join the fight. The Sabertooth packs are rallying along with the Scrap Launcher. It's a fucking banger, boys! 500 HP on Malice, he's fallen, but there's the big Reaper of Souls! The leadership is holding for now for the Sabertooth, but how long can it last as he's healing up and taking damage in equal measure? Everybody's taking big damage! Extra ingredients is out, but so is the Bloodstorm. Malice is down to 300 HP and falling for the Sabertooth packs are so close, they're routing, oh my god! Scrap Launcher charges in, pushes Malice away, 250 HP, and it's still shrinking down slowly as he drains away from his Tzarkhead form. Balance of Power is back in the Dark Elves' favor, what can a Sorceress of Fire do without Malice in the fight? 250 HP and stalling, he's stalling it out. Oh, there's a big heal coming in for the Slaughtermaster to try to keep him in the fight. Malice is down to 60 HP, he's down to 70 HP, but he gets a big shot on the Slaughtermaster. The Slaughtermaster's thinking about routing, don't you fucking dare, don't you fucking dare route. Malice is dead, they fucking got it, they got it, they're fine, they're chilling. Don't you route ogres. There go the Sabertusk packs, the Sorceress of Fire is fighting. Does she have a burning head in her pocket to just lower their leadership? Can she do it? It's impossible, but is it? 
Sorceress of Fire is running around in circles. She does need to commit to a fight. Looks like there we go. There we go. She's fine. She's fine. We're chilling. She takes big damage. She gets pushed off. Negative leadership for a little bit. Then she charges into the scrap launcher, trying to get rid of it. But her leadership is just too low. She just can't do it. She gets pushed back. Her leadership is negative. And they do it. And they do it. The boys do it. Let's fucking go, Teddy Spaghetti. Does that also deserve a cast? Whew. Whew, that was nuts. Oh, I'm shaking. Slaughtermaster, only 650 value considering a 1v1 Zarkin at the end. 3,000 for the Sky Striders, 900 for the Mournfake Cap of Iron Fist, 1,800 for the Lead Belchers, 1,100 for the Noblar Scrap Launcher. Ogre Bulls overall did fine. Nabla Trappers overall really struggled, actually, which is not something you get to say often. And a thousand value on the Saber Tusk, which is twice their value. For Thrak the Twins, Malice Darkblade with 4,100. Trying to put that game on his back. 1,400 for the Firecaster. The Medusa's mixed, but overall pretty good. The Dark Rider Peter Crossbows did not get much done, unfortunately, for them. Black of Corsairs, mixed value. Dark Shards mixed overall, and the Dread Spears did. So that was nuts. I think I'm done for the night. I think, I think, I think I'm out of gas. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to go on from that. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm saving some replays I, I haven't forgotten, you guys. Alright. That was a banger, my friends. Round three is done. Most people are moving on to round four, which means we will soon have tournament finals to organize. I will try and keep that to a, a short thing. I know not everybody enjoys the math stream. But um, there's a specific game I have to look for. There's a specific game I have to look for, so one second. Alright. Someone wanted to, uh, the person who sent this in wanted me to make sure to cast it so I didn't want to forget and then later in the night maybe skip it or something, so. We got Lone Wolf versus Boon Tax Evasion. Final should be if have at least three wins, right? It should be. Uh, I'll look at it clo more closely after this game. I'll get it more closely. Kevin. This will not take long. It's a small map. Alright, we have some crazy shit here from... Is this King of Sparta? Hold on, sorry. It's on my stream. I just want to know who this is, so one second. Alright, this is Boon Tax Evasion and Lone Wolf. Got it. So it's not King of Sparta. I didn't want to miscredit it. Uh, for Lone Wolf, we have the Skyhammer. We have Iron Drakes, Thunderers, Dwarf Warriors, more Iron Drakes, more Thunderers, more Dwarf Warriors, but they're in a crazy formation. And then we have Ungram, Mother Flippin' Iron Fist with, like, all of his buffs. On the other side, we have Zinch with triple Doom Knight of Zinch, one of which is the Knights of Immolation. All of the pink and blue horrors you could imagine across the front line. And then Village the Cursling with Zinch's Firestorm, Blue Fire, and Pink Fire. I can explain. No need. This is the perfect Zinch build. There's no problems. Dwarves are firing out into these guys as the Iron Drakes move forward. The Iron Drakes with their burnt leadership debuff are going to be very good versus these demonic units. 
But the horrors are firing in. Not getting as much damage as I would have hoped. As I suppose the Iron Drakes might have significant fire resistance. Oh, they do. 40% fire resistance against all these Zinch units. Now, the Doom Knights are diving in to try and stop these Iron Drakes from melting their poor little blue horrors. But the, the blue big horrors are not getting a lot of damage out. Oh, God. The dwarves' high armor and their shields are just chilling under this onslaught. Dwarf warriors are moving out to deal with all these blue horrors and stuff as Village also dives in to stop the madness and stop the fighting. Now, the Doom Knights are getting out some decent damage value, and these other Doom Knights are going to beat up on the Skyhammer. So that's kind of interesting and neat, while Thunders are getting pushed away. Overall, Zinch is doing okay on the start here. They've disrupted a lot of the ranged units of the Dwarves and killed off some stuff too. Ungrim is putting Village in the dirt. Popped all of his buffs. He has 1k weapon strength. And Village is already going to start routing as Ungrim beats the piss out of him. Go, Ungrim, go. Village is officially routing. We'll see if anybody's around to bail him out while the blue horrors start to run out of ammunition and turn into melee units. Iron Drakes are trying to damage the Doom Knights on the side. I don't know if Ungrim is going to bother chasing Village. Maybe these Thunders should just turn and kill him. Could be valuable to get rid of that Zinch leadership. Thunderer is turning and firing sideways into the Knights of Immolation. Nice stuff here as they're poking him down. The Dwarves are ahead on the balance of power. As a lot of the Doom Knights have taken significant damage, there's one healthy one left. The Horrors of Zinch are running out of ammunition, except for the Pinks. But Village, this is unfortunately a mistake, as Village is not getting finished off. It looks like the Skyhammer is trying to go snipe him out now. But Village will be allowed to rally in the distance, so that is a bit of a whoopsie. Um, they shouldn't have allowed that to happen. Ungrim is out fighting some horrors, and the Flamer core of Iron Drakes is trying to kill off the pink horrors. The dwarves are mostly just withstanding the tide, though. The blue horror's ammo was to extremely little effect, and now they're just half-assed melee combatants, while the dwarven ranged is all rallying and still dealing with Doom Knights on the far side. Knights of Immolation about to rout as they get burned. The burnt debuff taking them down to six leadership, but they are back. And Village doesn't seem like he knows he's rallied yet, as it looks like the Horrors are busy doing other stuff. Ungrim is taking these Pink Horrors to task while Dwarf Warriors cleave and butcher through the Blue Horrors. The Doom Knights of Zinch are, uh... I don't really know what they're trying to achieve. But they seem to just be having a little bit of a group huddle session next to these Thunderers while other Thunderers shoot at them. The Dwarves seem to have noticed briefly that Village is indeed alive. Yeah, the Skyhammer's still shooting at him from the distance. But Zinch is falling very far behind on the balance power now. And I don't know how they can win it. All of the Doom Knights are beyond repair now. All three of them are extremely low. Village is extremely low. Your only healthy units are really these Pink Horrors, which aren't long for the world either. As the Iron Drakes still try and peel them off. The Iron Drakes are doing less damage than I was I, I had hoped. I, I will say that that was a bit disappointing. In comes Zinch's Firestorm, the three randomly moving Vortexes. They're doing good damage to that Thunderer, as all three of them RNG into the exact target they wanted to. So that's nice. But it is too late for Zinch. Army losses will hit. And that'll be a win. I know Lone Wolf wanted me to cast that because he said it was his first win. So, I didn't want to forget that he asked that I do that. But, congratulations, Lone Wolf. Take the win. Take a bow. Take a lap. Thunderers did good. Iron Drakes did good. Ungrim did good. Which is not a sentence I get to say a lot. Village got rolled by the Slayer King. Doom Knights did pretty well, but the pink and blue horror spam against the dwarves, unfortunately, they cannot get through the dwarven armor or shields, and it definitely showed. Okay, now I do have to take a look at... I do have to take a look at that bracket. So one second here. Please ignore my room for me, but 
So come with me so you're not just staring at a list of replays wondering what the hell is going on. You can at least see what I'm looking at. Um, so going through the bracket, we still have five games left to complete on the end. I know King of Sparta, Spartan, and Electric Spinach need an extra point because of their buy rounds. So let's see if that's something I need to keep in the back of my head. Electric Spinach, King of Sparta, and Spartan. Okay, so Spartan would get to two. King of Sparta and Electric Spinach would get to three, but Captain Telus already has a four. Are there any other fours possible? Sittler, Dwembox. Stittler can still get a four. I press buttons and Trogdar. Trogdar can get a four. Sir Grival, Lone Wolf, Tamo, and King of Sparta. Oh, King of Sparta's at a two. Andy had a Byron, which gives him one more. So King of Sparta actually still... No, he can't. Okay, so somehow the system gave him his point here. Because he, he lost game one. So anyway. Um, Tamo, Survival, Lone Wolf. Tamo has one. Survival has two. Lone Wolf has one. Okay, so the only possible fours are Stittler and Trogdar to catch up to Telus. And Trogdar lost to I press buttons. So now it's just Stittler. Right. I'll check messages off screen. Just figuring some stuff out here. People are asking me questions. Do you happen to cast my game? Which one? The ogres one? <laughs> Teddy Spaghetti's like, did you cast my Dark Elves versus Ogres game? Did I cast your Dark Elves versus Ogre game? I lost my goddamn mind. All right. Oh, we have Mel and Lowry, too. How are they doing? Mel and Lowry. Lowry's at zero. Mel's at one. Okay, so they're not going to get a perfect four either. Understood. Understood. So, actually, the only... The only thing left in the tournament as far as, like, winning the whole fucking tournament goes is if Stittler can beat Dwembox, then we have a tie for first. No one else can get up there. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let me just notify the players that that is the situation. What's your favorite cereal? I, I love granola. I love granola of any kind. All right, let's find our next game and load it up while I tell the players. We have more Ogres with Trogdar and Dwembox. Tealus just wins with a perfect 4 0 knight. Understood. And I'm going to get back to casting games. Hopefully, that they understand that is there. Okay. For this game, while the players continue to play it out, we do have. Oh, and for anybody still in the bracket, uh, that is a quick thing. 
for anybody still in the bracket that's like, dude, that's fucked up. I haven't even finished my games, and you know I'm out mathematically. Yeah, unfortunately, that is how math works. Um, but still for free to send in your replays because after the tournament's actually over, I'll just go through all the replays. Cat, I'll make sure to cast some from names I don't recognize, like I haven't cast any of your games tonight. I'll make sure to cast at least one. And then I go through all of them, and any that I find interesting, I'll cast before going to bed. But after I've cast one of everybody's games, then I'll get a little more selective on one where like, oh, we've seen this matchup like six or seven times today. Or like, oh, this is Hero Hammer, I want to skip that. So I'll get a little more selective, right? So, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. For the Empire, we have Outriders, Grenade Launchers, the Black Lions, Hellblaster, Volleygun, War Wagons, some Empire Knights, Marcus Wolfhart with his net and his focus shot, and then Free Company Militia, Handgunners, the Silver Bullets, Firecaster, and some Spearmen for a front line. Inside the Ogre Kingdoms, we have Noblars, who are getting melted by Grenade Launchers right now. Four Noblar Trappers, a bunch of Ogre Bulls with Iron Fist, two Lead Belchers, Man Eaters Great Weapons, more Saber Tusk Packs, more Man Eaters with Great Weapons, and the Slogmaster of the Great Maw. But actually, the Black Lions might be pogging out this game. They might have a grand old time. Dwemer Puzzle Box. Oh god, this game is embarrassing. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. GG, everybody. It was fun. Yes, if you did get knocked out of the tournament, remember, we do this every single week. And if this time zone is good for you, then this will be the time zone every other week. So do feel free to come on back. We are always happy to have you. Saber Chest Packs do get back into the Free Company Militia. They get recharged by Empire Knights. And where is the Ogre Kingdom's follow-up? Some of these Saber Chest Packs are a little slow on the draw. It looks like the Ogres are having a disjointed uh, advance. They're not all showing up at the same time. They're kind of coming in piecemeal, which is going to be a bit of a problem. So you don't love to see that. Lead Belchers are trying to get into range right now as Nabla Trappers are starting to get here. Looks like the Empire's chucking out a quick burning head sideways down these Nabla Trappers. That should get two of them, and it does, routing them off. Empire's at a very good position so far this game. As some Ogre Bulls do get through the front line, plow into Free Company Militia, but they're going to be shot by Outriders and Handgunners all the while. Because these handgunners are trying to reform lines and get some shots off, but they do need to hurry up. This free company militia are dying every second they delay. Lead Belcher's also tearing into those guys, but more and more handgunners pouring fire into the ogres. That is some really good stuff. More ogres piling up on Empire Knights, but uh, yeah, the Empire seems very in control of this game. As the ogres still have some saber packs lagging a bit behind, man eaters haven't even joined the fight yet. And look at the black lions torch those lead belchers. Oof. Marcus Wolfhard's snare onto the Slaughtermaster right in front of the Silver Bullets and other handgunners. He's getting just torn apart. <laughs> oh, somebody save him. He overcasts Trollguts healing onto himself, but the overcast damage also hurts him. He just can't catch a break as the net wears off. He's already routing as he runs away under a giant hailfire of bullets. And even the healing can't save him as he just gets fucking lit up on the way out. <laughs> oh my god. Leave the man alone! Jesus Christ! They're still shooting him! They shatter him! Which, like, of course you did! You just fired, like, half of Nuln's armory into that fucking guy! And then Marcus hits him with a focus shot, because he's not dead enough yet, apparently. I'm sorry, Spartan. I'm sorry you had a tough tournament. Oh my god. Alright, well the Ogres are so far behind. The Balance of Power is about to army loss and they've lost their lord. They've lost everything. Saber Chest Packs are taking a bunch of damage as these hand gutters in the back are still just firing away. I guess they haven't got that much value, but it feels like they did great. Silver Bullets, yeah, they got a lot of value. As soon as those Man Eaters route, that's probably going to be a GG. Once they go, I expect we'll see army losses. So they've routed... Ah, uh, no army losses yet. I was a little off on the prediction. That poor fucking Slaughtermaster. <laughs> Just standing there. Getting torn to pieces. For like a minute straight. 
Because even after the net wore off, like, he was routing, so he couldn't dodge anyway as he was trying to leave, and the Empire was just fucking him up. Marcus did fine, Firecaster did fine, the Empire Knights guarded what they needed to, the grenade launchers killed a bunch of, of uh, Nobbler trappers, but man... The bullets. The bullets. In one-sided games, there's not a lot of interesting stuff to talk about with the values most of the time, because it's like, yeah, one side got rolled, so of course they're not going to have a lot of values. That game was rough, Dwemer. Oh, yeah. It looked rough, buddy. It looked rough. Eh, shit happens. I've been rolled. Okay, so we do have a winner for the night, by the way. Just a quick a quick hop in. Stittler was defeated by Dwembox at the round four final point. I have a message from Trogdor. Okay, cool. I always get paranoid at the end that someone's going to send me a replay that's... Not a replay. Send me a message that's like, you did your math wrong again. Because I know Giyama caught me doing my math wrong once, and that made me sad. Anytime, Lone Wolf. Anytime. So, Captain Telus was the only one to get through the tournament with a perfect 4-0. He was the only one to win every matchup. So, Captain Telus does win tonight's tournament undefeated. Congratulations on your win. Well deserved. Well deserved. He is now a Bone Ripper. And I'll continue on with the casts. So now we're just sorting through stuff. Let's first let's first look for anybody we haven't seen yet. I don't know if I've seen Barbatone, so I'm gonna keep that. I've seen both those players. 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 I've seen them. Barbatome again. We saw one electric spinach game, but I'm always down for more. I've seen both those players. Big Daddy Stalin I haven't seen. Okay, so we got to keep Big Daddy Stalin, and he only had one game, so let's just cast it. Where was Big Daddy Stalin? There you are. Let's just cast it. So Empire versus Vampire counts. Got to make sure, get everybody once. I press buttons here. If you do a replay of mine, could you do the fourth one sent by Trogdor? Sure. Not that replay, I beg you. Big Daddy Stalin's his eye press buttons. Okay. I'll uh, I'll cast your round four, dude. Sure. Sure, sure. Alright. Surprise here, I gotta admit, I didn't ever see that flame cannon mixed in with the front line. Dude, that game was hilarious. <laughs> Shit was so funny, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dwemer, it sounds like you had a good time, so. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. We're around. As I've said, every week we host one of these in different time zones, but if you're in this time zone, it'll be back in two weeks. All right, for this game in front of us, we have the Sunmaker, a bunch of spearmen, archers, great swords, swordsmen, the silver bullets, and then some uh, pistoliers, war wagons, and Boris Toddbringer. I don't see a caster for the Empire, which again, I just, I'm just going to point it out. Always bring a caster. Always, always, always. On the side of the Vampire Counts, we have Felbats. Felbats, Felbats, Felbats. We do have some Crypt Horrors, Zombies, Necromancer, Vlad the Chad, and then Blood Knights up on the side. I believe this is Stittler. I, I believe Stittler's the Vampire Counts, because I know Big Daddy Solomon is the Empire. Alright, Felbat's doing their best to distract the backline, but they really don't do that much damage, so they're just trying to stop some things. But the Sunmaker, like most artillery pieces, especially Warp Lightning Cannons, Warp Lighting Cannons, for some reason, never go offline. I don't know why. Is that a fucking Wind of Death? <laughs> that was a Chad Wind of Death. That actually kind of messed these guys up. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, we take those. One Greatsword is already routing because of Vlad's amazing Wind of Death. And the other one is under a bit of duress. But the Crypt Horrors are coming in. Sprinting forward to the Silver Bullets who don't even see their death coming because they thought their backs were covered by Great Swords. While the Sunmaker tears into these Crypt Horrors, as Pistoliers also do, the Empire's up to a bit of a lead here. 
<laughs> and that volley was less good for the Sunmaker as it murders those archers. <laughs> Jesus. Blood Knight's gonna get a downhill charge. There are Spearmen trying to protect the Sunmaker, but they're unbraced Spearmen, so they will take a lot of damage on the charge. And Blood Knights are just too elite for Spearmen to hold them off anyway. They will get going here soon. The Empire is in mass exodus. We have War Wagons and Pistol are still alive. Boris is doing his best to carry. Some great swords are still holding, but overall, the undead tide was too much for the poor Empire. Boris is going to get some free pickings on a Necromancer. This is a nice little, nice little pick. No problems with it whatsoever. Wind of Death. Wind of Death isn't troll anymore. I still don't think it's like a great spell, but it's fine. All right. Boris is, is killing the tithe and harassing the Necromancers while Vlad runs up. All of the Empire's range is running, so we still just have some great swords grinding it out. We do have some archers in the trees that are coming back. And don't worry, Bill Nye. Uh, I know you wanted your, your ground four game cast. I'll get to that one. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Boris is fighting Vlad. Vlad is a, a vastly superior combatant, so Boris is going to opt out. I like that, using his mobility instead of just fighting a better combatant. And uh, this Necromancer once again gets charged by Boris deeper into the great swords that are ripping him apart. So the Empire is doing good to scrap back in this late game. And these great swords are proving to be quite the backbone. Besides the one that got rounded up, routed off by a wind of death, <coughs> the other three have held forever. And they're just grinding through zombies and crypt horrors even. This one's fighting Blood Knights and doing a hell of a job. Necromancer is down. And actually, can these greatswords do good damage to Vlad? We'll see. I guess there's crypt horrors that are going to go harass him. Man, the Empire's coming back. If these Blood Knights come over for the War Wagons, though, that'll be the end of the War Wagons. Boris dives down onto the other Blood Knights with Pistoliers surrounding them. So the Blood Knights are kind of trapped in here. Great Swords take a Master Beguilement to lower their melee attack to zero, but Boris is doing enough work on the Blood Knights. He might start getting them crumble on his own. Vlad's trying to get out of these Great Swords who are harassing him all the way as he goes. He just he just turns around and bodies like eight of them. <laughs> You're not getting past us for the Emperor and whatnot. Oh, you want to fucking go? And just murders the shit out of some Great Swords. I love it. Blood Knights get invocation to heck while they chase off Pistoliers and look like they wrap back into these great swords who are still Master of Beguilemented, now surrounded by Crypt Horrors and Blood Knights as Boris tries to free them. Other Pistoliers charging in to help with these zombies. What's the best way to kill Vlad as Empire? Uh, you should probably take a caster, and I would probably take a Spirit Leech caster. Uh, other than that, killing his entire army, leaving just Vlad all alone... And then you can either cycle charge with uh, Boris or Franz. Or if you have Balthazar Gelt, who's also a good choice, you can final transportation him to death. Or you just kite him and then like you have hand gunners and stuff in the late game, just shoot him in the face. But he's very tanky against the Empire. The problem with Vlad is most foot characters don't have a lot of agency and he is no exception. But it's hard to kill him specifically. So usually you just want to kill the entire army that isn't Vlad and hope either army losses takes care of him or you have enough left to kill him in the late game. Yeah, and Toyovich is correct in the chat. My key presser keeps getting activated for no reason. Sorry. Don't be sorry. You picked my Blender game? We'll get to the other one, too. We'll get to the other one, too. Isn't Eshen Magic the best magic? No. No, it's not. Boris does get rid of the Crypt Horrors. Blood Knight's getting very, very low. And this healthy zombie is a summon, so it's not real. Meanwhile, the healthier Blood Knight did catch the War Wagons at last, and they're running them down. These guys are already routing. I guess they used all of their ammunition, however. 1,200 value. Okay, not insane value, but still good. I don't think Boris can beat all this stuff, though. He gets Master Beguilemented while in the middle of Blood Knights and the Crypt Horrors and Vlad. He's, he's getting torn apart at this point. I think that's probably GG. That was a good scrap back from the Empire. I think it's going to be a Vampire Count's win, but... Damn, that was a good scrap back. I mean, look at... Wow, Vlad is actually nearing his heel cap. <clears throat> that should be... 
GG though, because the Empire doesn't really. Yeah, the soundtrack was kind of going nuts for a simple thing. Anyway, uh, the Empire doesn't really have any DPS left, and we still have two Blood Knights, even though one of them is in dire straits. The other one's very healthy. And I'm going to times two speed, but unless something crazy happens, this is over. That should be a win for old Stittler. So I can charge in from Boris. He is getting good damage on to Vlad. But in come the Blood Knights, in come the Crypt Horrors. Everything routes, and Boris stands alone. Blood Knights are going to take out the Great Swords. Rear charge from other Blood Knights onto Boris. And Vlad just watches. Like a sick fuck. So that was Stittler and Big Daddy Stalin. Some of the Crypt Horrors got insane value. Blood Knights very well. Vlad did fine. Side of Big Daddy Stalin. His Boris play was really good. His War Wagons did fine. His Great Swords also did amazing work. Besides the one that got wounded to death. So yeah, overall, good build, solid play. Liked it. So then that was Big Daddy Stalin. I know he wants me to cast Wood Elves Cathay. And then we need a game with Barba, Barbatoam in it. Those are our requirements. So let's take a look through here. Uh, Dark Elves and Ogres. Eh, it's got Malekith, sure. That one he wanted casted, so I'll cast it. Wood Elves and Slanesh. That's a spicy enough Wood Elf build, fine. And that's our Barbatoan game, so I don't, I don't have to guarantee anymore. Uh, Ogres and Bretonia. I really don't want to watch Heal Spam on Bretonia, and we've gotten a lot of Ogres tonight, so I am going to skip that one. Ogre's Bretonia, but it's the other side. Okay, so I can skip that. Wood Elves, Greenskins, looks fun, sure. Greenskins, Wood Elves, looks like the exact same game, so I'm going to delete it. Bretonia versus... Where is the Chaos? Okay, that's wild, but I'll, I'll cast it for Harry. I'll cast it for Harry. Wood Elves, Ogres, it has Orion. It's getting cast, easy. Nerd on Corone, more Bretonia and Beastmen. Uh, skip. I love you, but skip. Demons Chaos Slanesh? Sure. Zinch Empire? Sure. Where's the Chaos? Where's uh, the Chaos? Where's the Chaos? <sighs> I'll see how I'm feeling as the night goes on. Bretonia, Norska. We haven't seen any Norska today. Fine. So we'll go from the top, work our way down. If the night's getting long and I have to go to bed, I might have to skip some of those later ones. You don't have to, I beg you. Spartan Witch Replay. Wonder if you would cast Nerd again to see if I improved on him, Kevin. Um, sure, I can do that. Yeah. I'm not trying to skip Bretonia to be a dick. I've just cast a lot of Bretonia. And when I have a limited amount of time left to stream, I usually want to pick replays that I'm excited about. I can grab a couple of your Bretonia ones, but just so you know why it's like, huh, I noticed you skipping all the Bretonia ones. It's like, yeah, they've been meta since April of last year. So that's 10 months of me watching Grail Knights get healed up and going, wow, can the Grail Knights carry again? So I'm not trying to be a dick. It's just as a caster, I'm like, ugh. For this game, Oak Kingdoms, four Noblars, four regular, uh, sorry, four Noblars, four Noblar Trappers, Powder Guts, Man Eater Pistols, ROR, two Lead Belchers, Ogre Bulls, Saber Chest Packs, one Man Eater with Great Weapons, and a Slaughter Master of the Great Maw. On the other side, for the Dark Elves, we have Malekith again on his dragon, a frontline of Dread Spears, three Cold One Knights, two Black Guard of Negron, and the Ravagers of Rakarth, ROR, Scourge Runner Chariot. Malkit starts off with a beautiful breath attack down the line of those Noblars, routing them off and getting approximately 300 value off that. Yeah, so that's a great breath attack. Really good start. Can you do the Slash Wood Elf game next so I can go to bed? Captain Teelus, I'll try. I will try. Alright, Noblar Trappers get dove on by Malkit because he just tries to disrupt them a little bit, but the Powder Guts are going to turn and fire at him. 
And those cold one knights are taking a circuitous route to get here, and it might prove a little too long to arrive by the time this fight's going to be over. Black Guard are also wandering into the fight. One's already half HP from the Lead Belcher Focus Fire they're getting. And Saber Tusk Back's going to take a fight with the Cold Knights just to keep them away from the Lead Belchers for now, because the Lead Belchers have a much more important task, namely murdering the Black Guard of Dagrod. <clears throat> Absolutely slaughtering them. I think this next volley is going to be rather potent. Yeah, look at him go. Oh, oh. Nice Soul Stealer. Got a little greedy. Wanted that third Lead Belcher, but couldn't quite get it. But then he dives right onto the Lead Belcher to take him out himself. But the Maneater Pistols, the Powder Guts, are going to turn and shoot him at point blank range. And the Powder Guts, for those who don't know, do have a passive where if they're losing in melee combat, they get plus 24 melee attack and melee defense, which just makes them really awesome. I love those guys. Ravagers of Karth come plowing through the Noblar Trappers, but I think they're mostly trying to get to this backline area. And Malekith is still having a bad time, but the Black Guard of Nagarond are arriving. Slowly but surely, they're going to get here, and they'll mess up the Powder Guts, even with that passive, like the Black Guard are just so elite. Oh man, the Lead Belchers tee off onto them, though, and the Powder Guts are just going to kite away as the Lead Belchers continue to fire in. Oh, those poor Black Guard, they're getting killed. <laughs> All right. Bye, Trogdar. Have a good night. It sounds like you got a lot of wins tonight. I think three? You were in the three club, I think. I don't know. Overall, you did fine. You did great. Another good breath attack from Malekith. The Colton Knights are getting wrecked much more than I thought they would have. And the Dark Elves really needed the Colton Knights to come through for them. They just didn't. They're getting bodied by the man who's great weapons over there. And without the Colton Knights coming in, there is no... There is no Eagles, Gandalf. The Eagles are not coming. And then without them, Malekith is about to just get shot in the face by all these guys. The Black Guard have been roasted and toasted by these Lead Belchers. It is just going to be a GG. One Colton Knight does get through back here. Charges the Lead Belchers. Honestly, even that in injured of a Colton Knight should be able to finish off those Lead Belchers. And Malekith's going for the Lord's Knight, but a Troll Guts is trying to keep this guy in the fight, healing him up as the Soul Stealer heals up Malekith. This is the best that the Dark Elves can do. Like, they're trying to get the Lord's Knight off while also attacking the Lead Belchers with Super Tattered Colton Knights. Maybe you can do that, and then just grind the Maneaters down in the late game? I don't know. It's desperate, but desperate times, right? Who wins in a duel, Queek or Deathmaster? Uh, if both sides AFK and just let them fight, Queek. But if Deathmaster cycle charges and uses his abilities effectively, Deathmaster. Because Deathmaster can net Queek and get a free charge on him. But yeah, if he just runs at him and stands there and fights until one of them's dead, Queek's gonna win. Malkith's trying to get away as the Powder Guts continue to harass him. Blackguard have finally gotten in here and are actually getting to fight something for once in their lives. And look at how much damage they're already doing. Even that damage, they're still doing a lot of damage to the Powder Guts. It's just too late. And not that the Dark Elves played bad with them, it was more that the Ogres played good. Powder Guts and Nabla Trappers trying to finish off Malkith, and if they do, the game will end. Well, these cold knights just kind of harass and chase around the lead belchers as they do. Troll guts are a butcher. Something is going to cast on the powder guts right now. There it is. Troll guts. Malekith is going to rout, and if he does, army losses should take hold. There it is. GG. Dwemer Puzzle Box that makes you very happy. Yeah, because like there's some games, and I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm really not. But there's there's games because I'll, I'll use Berserk as an example. I know, I know, Telus has to go to bed, so I'll keep it short. But um, I'll use Berserk as an example because he is the best player in land battles right now. So when I say this about him, like, you know, I'm not just punching down, like, shitting on newer players, right? It's fucking Berserk. But if you saw the stream today, he had a game where he was Slanesh. And Nakari just didn't commit to a fight. Nakari used his debuff on a Centigor that was running away, so, uh, uh, so it didn't. He didn't get to use the debuff at all, and they didn't have the debuff up when the Sons of Goros came for him. So he didn't commit to a fight, and his four thousand gold board was running around the backline the entire game, doing literally nothing, and he lost. That's Berserk losing that game. That's a mistake that cost him the game. And then there's a game like this. Where I don't think Stitler made a big mistake. I honestly didn't really see one. I felt like Dwembox played better. 
So it's like this game was one off of someone playing better than the other rather than someone making a mistake. Like, you know what I mean? Because there are games that are are lost and then there are games that are won. And this is a game that was like won. I know that sounded stupid, but like I'm having a hard time getting the thought across, but I hope that kind of made sense. Because the lead belcher is just kited really well. His saber toast packs and man eaters with great weapons appealed for them excellently. Powder Guts did fine, but they're one of my favorite RRs in the game, so of course I'm going to say they did fine, because I fucking love those guys. Yeah. GG's. Bye, Wesley Bravo. Okay. That is Bretonia Hero Hammer. I definitely want to cast that, so I'll get rid of it just now. And then Captain Teal's wanted to one of his games cast so he could go to bed, which is fine. Um... And then I know Tro I know uh, Big Daddy Stalin wants that, so we'll get around to it. Captain Tealus versus Bard. Now this is Tealus, the tournament winner for tonight. He had a perfect 4-0, so if you've been paying attention, then you know that he does, in fact, win this game. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the journey. Good night, Dwemer. For Slanesh and Captain Tealus, we do have Mirror Guard, Chaos Warriors of Slanesh the Hellscourges, and Marauders of Slanesh the Hellscourges. Two Chaos Knights with, with Lances? Nope, just Chaos Knights of Slanesh. Three Marauder Horsemen, a Zazel with his Rampage Pavain, and then Acquiescence. We have another Chaos Knight in the woods. For the Wood Elves of Barbatol, we have Glade Riders with Hagbane Tips. Dryads in the front line, including the Wraiths of the Frozen Heart. We have some Glade Guard with Hagbane Tips. Wild Riders... Spellsteering of Life with Awakening of the Wood and Earthblood, One Way Watcher, and a Sister of Twilight. Harry does not deserve the replay, I swear. Alright. Yeah, I'll have to probably skip some because it is 10 o'clock where I am, and I'm hoping to get a bet around 11 at the latest. 10.30 preferably. Wood Elves lighting up Slanesh on the way in. They've already almost lost an entire devoted Marauder as the Glade Guard are, are teeing off here. Bronze Shields and 15 Armor does not a tanky boy make, and he is going to run away. Chaos Warriors of Slanesh getting their armor sundered by the Sisters of Twilight, also making them vulnerable to the Archer Fire that's coming in. But here come the mobility forces of Slanesh. Chaos Knights charging into the Dryads and Wild Riders. A Rampage is out for the Glade Riders to hang in so they can't run away, and they get destroyed on the charge with those Chaos Knights of Slanesh. There they go, and the Chaos Knights' health didn't even move. Here is the front line, and more Chaos Knights coming down through the back line, sneaking in past the Dryads, past the Cavalry, and downhill charging through the Waywatchers, doing so much damage to them before rolling right out to rear charge on the Wild Riders as well. Whose ankles are currently getting broken. So this is why they're going to have to do something to change the state of things as Slanish is slamming into these Wild Riders and Dryads. Those guys are going, going down quick. A Tree Man on the front line is trying to cause some disruption. Has good weapon strength, good melee stats, so it'll do well against these Chaos Warriors. And the Glade Guard have turned to try and get some damage out on the Chaos Knights, but the the Chaos Knights are kind of running amok right now, and I don't know what's going to stop them. The Wood Elves have one of those builds where I just don't know where the money went. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a bad build. It just feels like they have 2,000 gold left on the cutting room floor that their opponents didn't have. To, that their opponents spent, and they didn't. It's weird. Earthblood healing up some of the Glade Guards. This is Twilight still trying to snipe in a little bit, but... A lot of the Wood Elves are heading for the trees, and not in a good way. Nice use of a Rampage to get the sisters on the ground. Is there a follow-up punish for that, or what was... What's the plan here? Oh, yeah, Azazel and Chaos Knights are going in for it. Good shots onto the sisters of Twilight. The Wood Elf front line is crumpling, the back line is crumpling. And in a three-minute game, I think that is honestly GG. I assume you would have said something at the end when I broke the list and I'm trying to step back and shut it. You're fine. Yeah, that is looking like army losses. The full health tree man is the only thing keeping the wood elves in the fight, and he is not going to be able to win it out. That is a GG. Very well executed surround and slam. It's nicely done. Let me see it. Why am I getting a message? 
All right, Lowry has sent me another replay. Thanks, Lowry. And for anybody who's watching right now, by the way, uh, real, real, real quick, because I actually didn't promote it. If you were in tonight's tournament, do you remember that if you're a Rat Ogre, you have access to this channel, Replays for Coaches, where you can post some replays and ask our coaches. Um, that would be Mulder Masters, I believe. Um, you can ping the Mulder Masters and ask them what you should have done. And you'll have people who will hop in and give you pointers and feedback on how you played and how you can possibly improve. So, yeah. Feel free to take advantage of that if you want to improve further. Okay, I just got a replay, so I'm going to refresh this page. Where's the cast versus vampire counts? That is double mortise engine grinding. I'm going to pass on that because we have limited time. I know Big Daddy Style wanted this cast, so let's go ahead and cast it. Night, Telus. Spartan, I'm aware. When I run into that replay, I'll get rid of it. Trogdar the Flatulent versus Big Daddy Stalin. Grand Thane, Wood Elves. We have some Vanguard shenanigans. The Wood Elves brought three Wild Riders. No, two Great Stag Knights and a Wild Rider and put them in the Vanguard. We have two War Dancers, three Dryads, Sisters of Twilight on their Dragon with a spell singer of Life on the Ground of Dwellers, Blow and Earth Blood, and then the Loex Tristers in the Woods. On the other side for Cathay, we have two Jade Lancers, a Jet Lion, Miao Ying with Regrowth and a uh, Missile Mirror. And then Jade Warriors, Jade Warrior Halberds, two Crane Gunners, and the Onyx Crowman ROR. But the Crane Gunners will not be around for too long as the Wood Elves sneak on in there and do really good damage on impact. Onyx Chromen are currently carpet bombing some poor helpless dryads, but this is a big win for the Wood Elves to start the game as the Crane Gunners will get deleted. Jet Lion runs forth and he tries to stop the Dryads and he does negative damage to them because that is a bad unit. Meanwhile, the Great Stag Knights continue to plow through, hit the Jade Warriors in the back, trying to break their charge defense. But in come Jade Lancers from the top side. Gonna downhill charge on Dryads who are already weakened by the Onyx Crowman. Now you can maybe get those guys routing as Halberds are gonna get the Great Stag Knights. They're trying to free in here. Oh, that breath attack just got missile mirrored. Okay, that was sick. I didn't fully understand what I was seeing there, but they, they tried to breath attack while missile mirrored and actually just went back up in their face. I have never seen that ever, and that was kind of awesome. Anyway, the Wood Elves get a little bit of heals out onto some of their great stag knights who are trying to get out, but they accidentally run face first into these Jade Warrior Halberds who are currently getting impacted by Wrath of the Storm, and that is a great stag knight just getting put in the dirt as a jet lion charges them from behind. Damn. Onyx Chroman harassing the Sisters of Twilight, and after a great start, the Wood Elves are having a bit of trouble. These Wild Riders are getting chased down by Jade Lancers, hit in the back as they leave. Other Great Stag Knights are stu stuck fighting Halberds, and the Grand Cathay front line is far superior to the Wood Elf front line. But I suppose the War Dancers are here, and War Dancers should be able to deal with Jade Warriors in pretty swift fashion. Ooh, but one was forgotten. Ah, it's gonna be a little painful. Now he's gonna try and dive, and uh push around the Spellsinger of Life. Meanwhile, Jade Lancers come back to charge into the War Dancers once more. Maybe route those guys off. And Cathay's coming back on the balance of power just a little bit. Missile Mirror again on the Sisters of Twilight. I don't know if they fire well in melee, but if they do, they're going to shoot themselves. Jet Lion was the MVP for providing Yin Harmony. Oh, yeah. I just meant, like, as a combatant, it's not very good. But since you, lo you lost both your Crane Gunners, I suppose it and the Empress Chroman are providing all the harmony you need. As the jet line comes out here, he was trying to charge Sisters of Twilight, but they got this guy just in front of him. And then they opt into landing on him anyway. But now it's the jet lion and Miao Ying versus this is some really cool attacks in onto those guys. And the Great Stag Knight still taking a lot of attrition damage. The Onyx Crowman running around. They don't have... Yeah, they only have one use of their Nangao grenades. The Wood Elves Cavalry is slowly dying out. We have a Wild Rider running off over there. Great Stag Knight's taking a lot of damage here, and I don't see the last Great Stag Knight, so I'm assuming it's already dead. For the Wood Elf front line, we have War Dancers who are very healthy. That's about it, though. The Sisters of Twilight are holding a lot of balance power. 
Nice breath attack comes through. Big damage onto those halberds. You love to see it. So Sisters of Twilight are chilling. On the side of Cafe, though, it's not all Sunshine and Roses either. Their front line has taken a lot of damage overall. Their Jade Lancers aren't exactly the healthiest things on the planet. And Miao Ying, while she is very healthy, she's not actually a better duelist than Sisters of Twilight. Sisters of Twilight will kick her ass. She has good stats, but I don't know. I just believe in Sisters of Twilight more. And they have heal support from this Spellsinger, who's actually getting killed by the Jet Lion right now. Go, Jet Lion, go! That's the most value I've ever seen one yet. I mean, that is a little bit of a mistake. I'm going to call a spade a spade. Spellsinger shouldn't have been dueling with that thing. It should have been running away. But, I mean, good pick. Good punish on the mistake. And now it looks like Jade Lancers are going to go run off the Spellsinger of Life, maybe? Ah, she's too fast. She's an Elven caster. She'll get away. Miao Ying lands onto Loic's Tristers, uh, Tricksters with the Sisters of Twilight. Probably doesn't want to take this fight, per se. Though I guess we have a rear charge coming from Jade Lancer, so maybe it's worth it. I'm just worried how much damage the Lotus Tristers are going to do. This is a good pick on the Sisters of Twilight, so I do appreciate that. And that's going to be a Dwellers Below. I'll keep the Sisters fight in the background, but look at this Dwellers. It's going to hit three Jade-type units. These aren't even Peasant long spears. These are Jade Warriors and Halberds getting fucked up. That's a really good cast from the Wood Elves. Oh yeah, the Wood Elves don't have regrowth. They brought Earthblood and Dwellers. Okay, so the Sisters are going to need some spammed out Earthbloods here pretty soon. All of these... Warriors are routing because that beautiful, beautiful Earthblood and the Dryads can actually just walk them off. So that's a pretty big moment for the Wood Elves. They are still very, very far behind. This is just why they're getting messed up right now. Their Conjoined Destiny is popped. But will they survive to see it? I don't think so. They're down to 155 HP, and they are dead. They did not get their heal procced. The Jade Lancers and Miao Ying ran them down. Stagnites charge in for one last time, but it's not going to be enough. They will just die to these Jade Lancers. And there's going to be a GG win for Cafe, and the Jet Lion actually doing some good work in melee. If Miao Ying regrowths herself, she'll just win off army losses. What did she just do? She overcast regrowth on Jade Warriors. That's a flex if I've ever seen one. Empress Croman die off with that demonic instability. Lifecaster routes, and that'll be it for the Wood Elves here. Well played, well played. I really liked Trogdar's flank. That was a great start. And then he just got kind of ground down by the concept of Cathay. I will say, like, this is a probably C tier faction. C or D is the debate. A C or D tier faction versus an S tier faction. So, you know, you don't want to be too harsh, but like. Letting his caster get caught by the Jet Lion did, you know, hurt him quite a bit because they got routed off. And then the Cavalry had a great start, but then they got a little overcommitted. And then the jet, uh, the Jade Lancers got to chase them off. And it was like this lose-lose of either you stop and turn and fight, but you're taking a charge. So they're going to get their charge bonus. Or you keep running away and you keep getting poked in the back. So the Cavalry got a little overcommitted and then the Jade Lancers ran them down a bit, which was really, really good. Miao Ying and the Jet Lion got some good engagements. But yeah, the, the Crane Gunners between them got 200 value, which is, like, really rough. And then Cafe still wins, so let's go. Croman played really well, too. The Croman and Jade Lancers play was really good. You'll love it. You'll love to see it. Okay, you guys wanted that one skipped. That's fine. And then I know Nerd on Bretonia wanted some feedback. Okay, so let's cast Nerd's game, give him some feedback. Even if he's gone to bed, hopefully he'll watch the VOD. I was, I was having a panic attack looking at, after looking at the backline. You hung in there. Alright, Nerd. What you got? On the build screen, your your uh, your build is fantastic. Knights of the Realm versus Norska are, are really really good with that anti large versus their skin wolves, which they desperately need to win this this matchup. Um, and then you have fire arrows as your arrows, which is again good versus skin wolves and stuff. So I like your build a lot. Hippogriff knights are good because they cause terror, and Norska hates that. Lewin is a great duelist. Love it. Does he have Blessed Son of Bretonia? Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Because it only, it only procs if he's less than 50% HP, which he's really not going to be until the late game. And in the hyper late game, no one's going to benefit from that. So, I don't know. I cut that. Otherwise, you're fine. 
Regrowth and Earth Blood for your caster. Meta, strong, good. Like I could I could bitch and moan about it being boring, but like it is the correct choice. So it's a it's a good build. On the side of Narska here, we have four skin wolves, five berserkers, four three broader hunters with javelins, Wolfric the Wanderer on his mammoth with all of his buffs, and still no caster. So whoever this is, I honestly just forget. As we were loading in, I was focusing on nerd, my bad. But um, whoever this is, I'll catch you in the post game screen. You gotta bring cash. You just gotta do it. Skills are fighting Knights of the Realm and trading? Okay, but the Knights of the Realm are gonna win, and then Lewin and the Hippogriffs. Actually, just Lewin is gonna provide his terror and help out. Well, the Hippogriffs dive onto the Javelins, doing a lot of damage to them and pushing them off, while the Archers also get through another one. So that's good. And these Bretonian Knights are just rolling through the skin wolves right now, so that's very, very good stuff. Now, good play here from Norska to comment on the other side is Wolfric did not stop on the front line at all. He just went straight into the back line. He pushed off these Archers, so that's good. We like to see that. Hippogriff Knights, though, making mincemeat out of this back line for Norska. The flanks and the back line of Norska are going very, very well for Bretonia, while the front line is going well for Norska. Their Berserkers are cleaving through pe peasants like there's no tomorrow. That's going well for them. But Bretonia never cares about their front line, which is why they're ahead of the balance of power, and I would definitely agree. So Lewin's coming back here to hang out. Looks like he has attack orders onto Wolfric. I don't know if that's their correct decision. And I actually, for once, I don't mean that in, like, the passive way of, like, I don't think it's a good decision, but I just don't want to say it out loud. I actually don't know how Lewin versus Mammoth Wolfric goes. That's just not a duel I've, like, ever seen. I would assume Lewin would win, because Lewin's fucking amazing all the time, but... I don't know. Mammoth Wolfric is kind of spooky with Hunter Jenkins down. Elsewhere, Knights of the Realm are cleaning up these Marauder Hunter Javelins, and archers are rallying, firing back over into Wolfric. You'll love to see it. Blags? It's true. It's true. You do have no caster builds that way. Kevin Volk, if you're who I think you were, one thing you did do is you got your archers to stop and fire before they got into the front line. That was something that I... If you're who I'm thinking of, you used to accidentally get your archers locked into the front line. But look at this. I like this a lot. Having your archers this spread out. This is nice. A boat goes through one and berserkers get onto the other, but they're doing really good damage to Wolfric. And yeah, Lewin is apparently kicking the shit out of him in that duel, which you love to see. While the Hippogriff Knights get rear charges... Meanwhile, Skin Wolves are somehow holding against Knights of the Realm in this super prolonged fight. Don't know what's going on over there, but Bretonia has cl cleaned up all the Marauder, Marauder Hunter Javelins. And they're now coming in for a rear charge over here while the Hippogriff Knights and Lewin team up on Wolfric. They only have a couple archers back. They're shooting at the Berserkers who are running at them. Good little volleys. Yeah, it was a clean game here from Bretonia. I don't really have that many notes. Or any notes. Did you do anything incorrectly? No. It, the only thing I would have said in the moment was I was scared of Wolfric taking that... Uh, of Lewin taking that fight with Wolfric. But in hindsight, it worked really great. So then you're fine. But I think that was a little... A maybe a little overly risky. But I'm really pulling at hairs here to find criticism. Like, it was just a pretty clean Bretonia game. Yeah. Yep. Okay, since that was you, then yeah, that's a big improvement, is your archers just, like, stopped and fired. And you controlled the, the side space with your cav pretty well, which is good. Sacrificing your center was definitely the right play, and it's, like, something that people have a hard time doing, where it's like, no... That's fine. You're Bretonia. Like, your peasants are dying. Who cares? Kill off the skin wolves. Kill off Wolfric. Kill off all the Marauder Hunter Javelins. The Berserkers will be there in the late game, but that's fine. You can cycle charge them or they'll just get army lost. But, yeah. Because some people would pull their Knights of the Realm in to try and charge the Berserkers earlier, but then they'll get rear charged by skin wolves. And, I don't know. It's just like, just don't bother. Let your peasants die. That's what they're there for. GG. Ah, oh, it was the lone wolf. Gotcha, lone wolf. Why the hell?
So I missed Tomo. I must have... I cast one of his games earlier. I cast your Slanesh versus Beast then. Not the other three. I'll cast another here now. Yeah, okay. Someone was saying I missed their replays, and I was like, no way, I thought I got everybody at least once. Um, I cast his Slanesh versus Beastman. Alright, I'll cast one of these two, but I am running out of time tonight. So let's look for one that's more interesting. I don't want to deal with Hero, Hero Hammer, so we'll cast the Ogre game. Yeah, I'll skip the Hero Hammer game. Let's do Ogres. Another Bretonia game, this one from Heim Delar versus Dwembox. Okie dokie. For Bretonia, we have Lewin yet again. Royal Pegasus Knights in the sky, a Grail Knight on the ground. Ooh, two Royal Pegasus Knights in the sky. Defenders of Fleur de Lis, Knights Errant ROR. Then we have some Pox Arrows. Spearmen at Arms, Peasant Mob Frontline, and of course, Regrowth and Earthblood. On the other side, for the Ogres of Dwem. Five Noblar Trappers, three Noblar Regulars. Some Ogre Bulls. Crushers with great weapons, two of them. Sabertusk Packs, more Ogre Bulls. Slaughtermaster Great Maw, and an Iron Blaster. Who is currently firing up and over into the Grail Knights. What else was Ogres? Is the one that went to the last few troops. Got it, Barb. All right, Lewin is landing in the Noblar Trappers, trying to distract them a little bit. He is currently getting shot by them, but if he pops his Lion's Shield, he'll get insane missile resistance, and he'll be just fine. Meanwhile, the Petonian Archers are firing up and over. Ogres are trying to sneak through a little bit, but it looks like Men-at-Arms are going to go get in their way. And here come the Knights, Defenders of Fleur de Lee, charging into these already wounded Ogre Bulls. Ah, their charge gets kind of blocked up. It's hard to tell if that was a misinput or, like, just a bug, but they kind of just stopped weirdly. Anyway, Royal Pegasus Knights... Eat up some Sabertooth packs. They do have bonus versus large and a very high weapon strength. Just not a lot of armor gruesome behind it. They did get off the ground before the Crusher stopped a lot of them. Some of those models are in a little bit of trouble. But the Nobbler frontline is, is getting destroyed by Lewin and the boys right now. Ogre Bulls still trying to penetrate that back line. And both sides losing peasants and Nobblars back and forth. Crushers finally might get a good charge, though. Dismember slowing down the defenders of Fleur de Lis to 34 speed, and the Crushers get a free charge onto him. But the Royal Pegasus Knights are going to rear charge them, making a bit of a Crusher sandwich. But the Pegasus Knights are having troubles landing. They're doing that up and down weird bug thing. So that's unfortunately a missed charge opportunity for them. Once again, not really a player fault, just kind of a weird bug thing. Hey, 1,001 airstrikes, how you doing? Noblar are still trying to hold back the Bretonian Tides, and the Iron Blaster is actually firing away at the Defenders of Florida Lee now. If they can get a shot on them while they were sideways, that would have been clutch, but now it's just trying to turn and fire one more time. It does not get the shot off before it gets obstructed by its own troops. Never mind, it does get a little bit, but there's a lot of friendly fire in that one. Both Crushers end up in the same place at the same time, fighting these Royal Pegasus Knights and the Spearmen at Arms. If you could get the Spearmen at Arms to route, that would be pretty huge, because then it could just focus down the Royal Pegasus Knights, who are already taking a lot of damage. Where did the Grail Knights end up? There they are, way on the far side at half HP. And the Iron Blaster focuses on them yet again. I think we have a shot coming in soon. I want to see it. Give it to me, Iron Blaster. Or don't, whatever, fuck you. Crusher's still fighting nearby Lewin. Normally you'd think that'd be a good fight, but I never trust anything to kill Lewin until I see it with my own eyes. Iron Blaster fires a shot into this clump of Bretonian Knights. Huge damage on the Royal Pegasus Knights there. Damn. That was that was gigantic. Troll Guts is in for the Crushers as they still try and fight around, but they're really not doing any damage to Lewin. I wonder if they're even trying to. They might just be going for the Royal Pegasus Knights. Balance power is about 50-50. I think the Ogres are feeling pretty good, but here come the regrowths. 
on the Grail Knights. We're going to get a rear charge on the Crushers. This could be a disaster for the Ogre Kingdoms as the very expensive Crushers are getting charged for free. We have Spears on one side, Royal Pegasus Knights over there too, and Grail Knights fighting against the Troll Guts. Still getting damage in here and there as they're getting regrowth to both sides, receiving a lot of healing. How's the tournament going? Good, it is over. Captain Telus won it with a 4-0 sweep. We've had some insanely good games as a Butcher comes out for the Crushers. Still trying to fight back against the Grail Knights, but there's Peasant Spears behind them. You can see some of their models are getting distracted by the, the Damsel and all this stuff. That's why when people say, like, fighting on support, that's why the support matters. It's not that the Spearmen and Arms are going to do a lot of damage. It's that the Spearmen will distract a couple of the Crusher models. So all of the Grail Knights would be fighting, like, two-thirds of the Crushers. And it just kind of helps you out. Crusher still try to catch up the Damsel of Life, and Bretoni is falling behind on the balance of power as the Iron Blaster continues to shoot at the Royal Pegasus Knights. What can Bretonia do? Grail Knight's still trying to kill some Ogre Bulls, but the Damsel of Life might need their help a little bit more as Royal Pegasus are closing in on the area. Can the Royal Pegasus Knights and the Grail Knights come over here, bust up these Crushers, and save the Damsel? Let's find out. Lewin is very damaged from his experience with the Crushers. He gets back in the sky, though, where he can heal up, but the Ogres are also healing their precious, precious Crushers. In come the Pegasus Knights. The Grail Knights are actually opting out. It looks like they want the Crushers to charge in, and then they'll rear charge the Crushers, is what appears to be happening. Lewin and the boys doing really, really good damage to the Crushers. Here they come. Where are the Grail Knights? Grail Knights are milling around. It looks like they're actually going to take a fight with the Sabertooth Pack, leaving the Crusher Blob to Lewin and the Royal Pegs, but that could be dangerous. Iron Blaster is trying to fire in. He's currently obstructed. He's aiming at the Flying Pegasus Knights. We'll see if he can even set up, uh, see them. No, hits the Grail Knights instead. Any off-meta stuff to show up and show off? Yeah, there was a lot of crazy games, dude. There was a lot of crazy games. I can't even remember them all. I'll just have to go back. As unsatisfying as the answers, that is. One of the Crushers is very, very low. The other one is full HP and healing up. Grail Knights trying to charge in with the last of their health. We did get the Damsel of Life back. We'll see what healing she can get out. Looks like an Earth Blood for her and uh, for him and Lewin. The Grail Knights being him. Has an archer still firing, but man, the ogres are so far ahead. I don't know if even Grail Knights can kill these crushers. They're full HP. Damsel of Life is pushed off. And Tomo took some good fights. How did the Royal Pegs do? Well, they did good value. He's trying to pick the Iron Blaster, which is nice. Grail Knights got good value too. I'm trying to think. What could Bretonia have done to win this game? Mm. I guess focus some more stuff down. Because, like, a bunch of stuff kind of got heal capped, but, like,. There was that point where his Grail Knights peeled off to fight Saber Test Packs, but they could have recharged those Crushers that were charging the Royal Pegasus Knights. That could have been more worth it, maybe. And Lewin definitely overcommitted to a fight with the Crushers on the left-hand side about midway through the game and took a bunch of damage. So I think cycle charging with Lewin more rather than committing to full-on fights for the whole thing and uh, focusing his Grail Knights on hunting down the Crushers rather than cleaning up Ogre Bulls and uh, Saber Test Packs probably could have been more worth it, but... That just looked like a really good Ogre's build, honestly. So, I, I'm not really like, man, Heimdallar fucked that up. It's like, wow, that was a crazy Ogre Kingdom's build. I liked it a lot. Royal Pegasus Knights were creative. Unfortunately, the Defenders of Fleur de Lis got massacred, and that is my experience with them, too, for the most part. So, I'd probably cut them and get a Knight of the Realm. Other than that, the build was fine, yeah. Maybe shut down the Iron Blaster sooner? Maybe, but that feels like it could be a bait, because it's going to take you a long time to do that, and then the Crushers will show up and mess you up. Crushers, 3,200 and 4,400 value. My goodness gracious. GG's, though. GG's. All right. I got to go to bed soon here. I've heard that one is crazy. That one's got to be crazy, because it's so short. Zinch versus Empire. Damn it, I want to cast that one too. All right, I'm going to skip this one. Slanish versus Warriors of Chaos. It just looks like two front lines grinding against each other. And we're running out of time. So these four, 
These four are the last games I'm going to cast. No ifs, ands, or buts. This is it. All right? We've cast a lot of ogres recently, so let's switch over to what else greenskins. Last four games of the night, we might be speedrunning them a little bit. Don't want to do them a disservice, but I do work tomorrow. It is 10.30, so let's get on with it, huh? Greenskins versus the Wood Elves. For the Wood Elves, we have some Dryads in the Vanguard, two Glaive Riders up front, and then some War Dancers for a front line. Four of them, actually. Glaive Guard, Durthu, and then Wild Hunters of Kronos and other Wild Riders. For the Greenskins, we have some Flanking Forest Goblin Spider Riders, Grom the Paunch, Orc Shaman with Brain Burster and Gaze of Mork, and then a whole bunch of Orc Borway Biggins, Forest Goblin Spider Riders, Goblins, Orc Boys, River Trolls, and Squigs, and then one Black Orc in the back. So a very diverse green skin army. Darthu's waddling forward. He is not afraid of anything in this army, and actually I'm a little concerned the green skins maybe can't take him down. Darthu is in fact a problem. Archer fire whittling down the river trolls already, and if Darthu feels like throwing out a sword of date, he could route them outright, but it doesn't look like that's going to be necessary. Meanwhile, glade riders take a fight with the forest goblin spider riders in the back, and the bacon boar cav with their spider support are coming in, and the wild riders are going to have to do something. It looks like they're going to take a heroic charge, and die for the glorious cause, because they will not win this fight, but they might just need to die and let the Dryads catch up and let the Archers shoot for a bit. Speaking of the Archers, some Forest Goblin Spider Riders did get in here, but the Wild Hunters of Kronos are trying to get rid of them. Meanwhile, the River Trolls are routing, and Durthu chucks down his Sword of Daith plus Flock of Doom. Those overlapping spells doing really, really good damage onto the Orc Boys and Goblins here, letting the War Dancers finish them off too. So far, the Wood Elf front line is holding for now, but the Greenskin Tide is not to be denied, and there are so many bodies trying to get past the Wood Elves right now. We do have some Orc Boys and Goblins clumping up on the War Dancers. They should be separating out and really saturating the back line. Orc Boar Boy Biggins beating up on Wild Riders as we expected they would, but Dryads have caught up to them. Now the Orc Boar Boy Biggins can just path past them and get to the Archers, which is what they should do. Black Orcs have joined the fight. They're trying to get past Durthu and the War Dancers and just get to these Glade Guard. But I feel like the Orc Warwick Biggins could do that a little easier. Wild Hunters of Kronos will soon be done with these Forest Goblin Spider Riders, and the War Dancers have routed off a lot of Goblins and Orc Boys and all this stuff. 64 kills, 2 minutes into the game is not bad at all. Now, Darthu is fighting with Brom the Paunch and the Orc Shaman. He will win that fight. He'll win that fight so hard. Orc Shaman has uh, the Skull of Koloth discouraging Darthu. Not that Darthu cares that much, to be honest. And the Flock of Doom is out onto some of the cavalry, trying to whittle them down a bit. But the Wood Elves are on the back foot, and they hate that. Especially their non-360 shooting archers. When they start running, it's really hard to find a new place to sit and shoot. Squigs are chasing off Wild Riders as a wall comes through for the Forest Goblins. And Grom gets a good charge onto Dryads. And Durthu's going to go looking for a bit of a better fight. Wild Hunters of Kronos are in the back, stuck fighting Black Orcs. Black Orcs and Orc Borway Biggins. It is not a fight the Wild Hunters of Kronos are going to win, but a quick Lamentation of Despairs cast on the side of them. Does a little bit of poke, just lets them know that Durthu is not happy with what's going on. Dryad's going to go charge Orc Boys in the distance, and another... Is that Sword of Daith? Curse of Armor here. Oh... Curse of Honor here, lowering the Greenskin stats as the Wild Hunters of Kronos charge back in with War Dancer support. This is actually a huge moment for the Wood Elves. Glade Guard Starfire Shafts firing downhill, and uh, yeah, this is a really, really good trade for the Wood Elves, especially if Dearth who can throw a Flock of Doom or a Sword of Daith on top of it. That would be super gigantic. Dearth who does come waddling in. There's the Sword of Daith. Big damage and lowering all of their armor even further as Dearth who stomps through them. He's going to route off some Black Orcs, routes off the Forest Goblins. He even routes off the Orc Borber Biggins, leaving Grom all alone. And the Wild Hunters of Kronos should take this opportunity and chase some of these things that are routed. Now in the backfield for the Greenskins, we have a lot of Orc Borber Biggins and Forest Goblin Spider Riders coming back to the fight from chasing things off the map. The Greenskins also have a big backfield that is rallying and coming back to the fight as well. Can Grom survive next to Durthu? Not if he sits still for too long. He's going to want to get out of here. Lucky Banner has popped for 40% damage resistance, but still he needs to leave as Durthu lumbers along ominously behind him. Fair enough. Wood Elves regrouping. They do have some archers that can offer counterfire. 
all three of their archers are technically alive, though they're in various states of disrepair. Wild Hunters Colonel is trying to hunt down the Orc Shaman, but they won't want to overstay as there are trolls and squigs nearby. And the archers are firing back against the Forest Goblins, still getting good damage out despite their d diminished numbers. I still don't know what kills Durthu. Starfire Shafts. Making mincemeat out of these Orc Porpa Biggins. They're not having a good time. Wild Hunters of Kronos. Route. They did overstay their welcome a little bit, and they suffer the price for it. Meanwhile, Durthu fights Squigs and River Trolls. Sends the River Trolls packing. Squigs Rampage could not retreat if they wanted to, as a Brain Burster hurts the Glade Garden. Still, the Skirmish Cap of the Greenskins are offering a little bit of poke in here. But the Greenskins seem at a bit of a loss, and I don't blame them. I don't know what they're going to do, because they don't really want to fight Durthu, but not fighting him is also not helping. The Glade Guard continue to poke away at the Orc Borba Biggins, who are trying to get an uphill charge, but Durthu charges downhill with Foe Seeker, and he's like, sure, why not? I'll just fight you. And then they start to run away again, but as they run away, they'll get shot with Glade, Rider, uh, Glade Guard the whole time through. If Durthu can get back here and get a Flock of Doom down, that would be pretty nice. Because at this point, it's just attrition. I don't think he should use any more of his spells on Curse of Honor here. That shit doesn't matter. Just Flock of Doom. You just want raw damage out on the green skills to force them on the back foot. There's a Flock of Doom. It's even overcast. Oh, it hits so many units. There they all go. Their health is sinking, sinking, sinking. And the Glade Guard continue to fire. At this point, I'm going to times two speed for expediency, just because I kind of have to. As the Wood Elves continue to sit and shoot into the Greenskins, now they charge forward. Another Brain Burster hurts some of the Glade Guard just a little bit, but Durthu charges in, immediately terror routing off the Forest Goblins, routing a bunch of Goblins. More shit is routing on the backfield for the Greenskins. They're just going to have a hard time staying in this fight. The Great Ends is here, helping out a little bit, and Grom does offer that ITP with the language of the boys as long as he's in melee combat. We'll see how long that lasts as Durthu... It's still slapping some fools. And you can stop stuff from terror routing, but you can't stop it from just, you know, normal routing. Starthu slapping through some fools. Grom's trying to duel him. But I've seen I've actually seen how this fight goes. Durthu wins. Grom can pop all of his buffs and Durthu can pop nothing. Durthu does win this fight. Grom's melee stats just aren't on the level of Durthu. Which is fine. I mean. He's a goblin on a chariot, for God's sakes. This is fucking Durthu. Grom is trying to cycle charge around and do his dirty work, but the, the unspoken elephant in the room is that what are you going to do about Durthu? <laughs> like, you could kill everything else in the Wood Elf army, sure. It's not going to matter. Durthu's still there. As he kills off some Orc Borbivians on their way in with the Lamentation of Despairs, Grom the Ponch still charges around. Bodhmus the Kronos trying to follow him. But, as I've said literally all game long, the Angry Tree is still here, waiting. Dryads get rid of some Orc boys while Durthu duels with Grom. Grom's down to about half HP. River Trolls are trying to offer a little bit of assistance, but Durthu don't miss with 69 melee attack versus 35 melee defense. Grom just cannot stand up to him at all. He's getting cleaved down. And it's probably GG. Again, sorry about the fast forward, but I feel like this game is beyond all repair. And we do have a couple more replays to get through before I have to go to bed. So Durthu is chasing some of the green skins around. Durthu gets in another fight. He takes a little bit of damage, but he deals a lot more than that back to them. Grom gets whooped, and that is a GG. Nice game from these players. 4,100 on Durthu. The Glade Guard, one of them got 2,000 value. My god. Wild Hunters of Kronos did well. The other cavalry all had to be sacrificed to keep the archers online. War Dancers did well and Dryads did fine. For Lowry, overall, really good game. I liked it a lot. Um, I don't, I'm a Black Orc hater. I just always hate on Black Orcs. It's kind of my thing. But I would rather have two archers than Black Orcs. River Trolls did okay. Orc Borgings did well. Spider Rider Archers did well. Both of them got exactly the same gold value, which is kind of insane. Orc Boys did okay, Spider Rider did okay, Swayze and Goblins did well. GG. We just cast Wood Elves, so I'm going to skip Wood Elves Ogres and come back to it in a second. We'll do Demons of Chaos versus Slanesh here. Fast, fast, fast. 
three games left in the night. I have a suspicion that this one will be short. Because neither of these factions really is good at drawing things out. Alright, for Captain Tealus and Slanesh, we have Devoted Marauders and Chaos Warriors with Hell Scourges, the Princes of Perfection as well. We have the Marquis of Masochism paired up with the Exalted Keeper of Secrets. The Exalted Keeper of Secrets is of Slanesh with Pavane and Acquiescence, three Skirmish Cav, and a Chaos Knight. On the other side, for the Demons of Chaos, we have a Plague Bearer Frontline, two Blood Letters of Corn, one of which is Exalted, Grand Vomitus Prince of Bubos, the Nurgle Caster guy, the Fleshy Abundance, and Miasmas of Pestilence. Miasma of Pestilence. We have Seekers of Slanesh, two Screamers of Zinch, one of which is the ROR. And then a Blood Crusher and a Change Bringer. Alright, Plague Bear's taking a bunch of damage from the Marquis and Chaos Knights, but there's the first Miasma of Pestilence, taking their melee attack down to 20. As Grand Vomitus slaps them, but he's going to get hit with three Skirmish Cav in the face. Mar Marquis and the other Keeper of Secrets hurting more Plague Bearers. We'll see what the Change Bringers can show up and do. Ooh, actually, they could do a lot of damage to these Keepers. Oh no, but Rampage! Oh no, but Rampage! Oh, the Change Bringers get brought to the ground. They're losing their shields. As soon as the Rampage wears off, they need to get orders out of here as fast as possible. Everybody else piles in to try and stop what is happening here. But does she still have her other Rampage? Rampage wears off. The Change Bringers are trying to get back into the sky. They take big damage. And they're getting a fleshy abundance right now to try and heal them up and keep them in it. But yes, she has her second Rampage, keeping them in the fight whether they want to or not. Damn. On the other side, Grand Vomitus is stuck fighting Chaos Knights, getting skirmished out by uh, Skirmish Cav. Change Bringers not having a good day. Fleshy Abundance still has a little bit of healing left to give them, but their leadership is still dangerously close to demonic instability, despite the fact that they're above half HP. They're just getting worked on, and they're a ranged unit that's in melee combat with two giant demons. They don't enjoy that at all. Miasma of Pestilence on the Chaos Knights of Slanesh. As the Seekers try and take on the Skirmish Cap, they'll get side-charged by the Chaos Knights. But I just have to keep my eyes over here. I have to know what happens with the Change Bringers. They are going to demonic instability crumble without getting any volleys off because of those Rampages. Surprise? That is fair. Also, surprise, I feel stupid, but I just said your name fast enough to understand the joke. My bad. Seeker's gonna do Seeker things and die horrendously, but the Chaos Knights will at least take some damage from Grand Vomitus on their way out. It's looking like Slanesh has this in the bag, however. Because without the Change Bringers, that's a lot of DPS gone, and their front the front line of the Demons of Chaos isn't exactly feeling too good either. Alright, Barbatone still still awake for his game coming up next. Screamers of Zinch getting run down by the Chaos Knights. At this point, the writing is on the wall. The Demons of Chaos build was Chad. It was Chad and very creative. Found Phantasmagoria from the Marquis of Masochism is getting all these Demons of Chaos to start crumbling. I like the Plague Bearer pick. I actually do. Plague Bearers are pretty solid melee combatants for relatively cheap. They can fight Chaos Wars and House Purges for the rest of the time. I think as you're literally saying in chat, Surprise, it was the Rampages on the Change Bringers completely cucking you. Oh, and the Blood Crushers were forgotten! Ah. That, okay, that's, yeah, that's a bit of a whoopsie. Yeah. Okay, so that's actually a whoopsie. The Change Bringers, I mean, that was just a good Rampage play from your opponent, and then you got dicked on that one, but I think your build was good. Now, you know, hindsight, with all the rampages and stuff, definitely cut the change bringers, but the rest of this kind of made sense for Demons of Chaos. At this point, you're just, you're just getting skirmished to death. Grand Vomitus is fun. I never see him. In comes the Lord Snipe. This is GG. You didn't play too bad, though. Seekers are unfortunately a bad unit, and you forgot your Blood Crushers, and then these guys got Rampaged. But you got good engagements for your Screamers. Grand Vomitus didn't overextend too much or get that damaged, honestly. That was fine. Yeah. 
GG. GG. As Turn would say, the dreaded reserves. Don't speak his name here. I'm kidding. So you have Electric Spinach and Surprise. Another game from Surprise. But first, we'll do Barbatome and Teddy Spaghetti. Two games left in the night. Sorry, someone, said, someone asked me a question. Just one second. I want to give this game proper attention. But you can win it. It's tough. A lot of Vanguard healing Cav, but also you could get Kited, which isn't great. I shouldn't say pretty bad it's like 45 55 so not pretty bad just meh okay cool all right focusing up on this game so what elves versus ogre kingdoms for the what elves we do have a way watcher out and about two blade riders with hag bane tips eternal guards with shields blade guards starfire shaft winter heart guards tree kin firebark elders zotes orion chad of the woods a spell singer of life with Awakening Wood and Earthquake. On the side of the Ogre Kingdoms, we have Sacratus Packs, two Lead Belchers, two Mornfang Cab with great weapons, some Noblars and Noblar Trappers. We have a Tyrant with his Snacks. He only brought his Snacks for self heal, and then we have a Fire Belly with Burning Head. Cool, cool, cool. Sapertus Packs and the Ogres are moving up as Lead Belchers fire away at the Waywatchers, but the Waywatchers are a very spread out force, making it hard for Lead Belchers to get those like huge satisfying volleys onto them. And the Waywatchers are currently actually shooting back at the Lead Belchers, so Lead Belchers see they need to back up or get some healing or something. Nabo Trappers firing at the Waywatchers as they get an Earth Blood. Overall, really good volleys from the Trappers. Lead Belchers trying to punish Zotes right now. It's not exactly going their way. Awakening the wood hurts the little trappers. And where are the Mornfang Cav and Ogre Bulls? They have to get in here somehow. You also need a Burning Head. Maybe it can be angled down here so it hits two Eternal Guard. Don't know. We have some Ogre Bulls that have been kept in tactical reserves. Looks like they're moving up now, but they're maybe watching for any cavalry shenanigans, but they might be realizing they have to get into that front line. Meanwhile, Glade Guard with, with uh, Starfire Shafts get attacked by Sabertus Packs. Tree King going to try and kill them, but a big burning head down the line does a lot of damage to Eternal Guard. And some friendly fire to Noblars, but okay, they're Noblars. Who gives a shit? Actually, they probably did about equal damage to both sides in the end. Eternal Guard fighting next to the Firebark Elders, but the Elven Infantry are taking a lot of damage, and it's going to be soon just Tree King left to fight. As Zotes get Flesh to Stone to fight back against Mornfang Cav. Let's stone run out in 8 seconds, and then the Mornfang Cavs should start trading way up. And what is Orion doing? So far he's just throwing his little javelins around, feeling like a cool guy, doing cool cool guy things. Blade Guard with Hagbang Tips, routing off a Lead Belcher, and another... Those trees are claiming so many victims, man. If, if your cavalry is in those trees, you can't bring them to the fight somehow. It's a curse. But they're here now. The Ogres are rallying, bringing all their forces to the fore. With the Tyrant nearby, the Mornfang Cav might just beat the Zotes. It's it's looking questionable. Both sides feeling real bad on leadership. But the Zotes might get routing first. Meanwhile, the Glade Guard do live. The Glade Riders are fine. These Waywatchers were fine until I looked at them, and now a Saber Test Pack is eating them alive. So say goodbye to the Waywatchers, my friends. And Zotes are routing too, but there go the Mornfang Cav at the same time. Tyrant should try and keep on the Zotes if he can, because that would be a pretty big pick, but I don't think he can keep up with them. Elsewhere, what Elven uh, Eternal Guard taking some big damage. That's a big damn. What do we have here? For the Wood Elves, we have two healthy Treekin, for all that matters. Full health Orion, full health Lifecaster, and two full health Blade Riders the Hangman Tips, plus some Zotes. For the Ogre Kingdoms, we have a bunch of Noblar Trappers, some Lead Belchers with a lot of ammunition, a Fire Belly who's pretty healthy, 
And then one Mornfang Cav that is healthy. But they're currently getting shot on all sides, so their leadership is tanking. But we'll see if they can hang in there. Also, the Ogre's healing is entirely reliant on the armor passive. Because they brought a Fire Belly, not a Troll Guts Caster. Lead Belchers firing at Zotes on their way in. They are very clustered up, but the, the Lead Belchers are terrible at hitting them. They seem to fire over their heads most of the time. Which is a bit silly. Now they're waking in the wood, damaging the Noblars down. And I actually think the balance of power should be worse for the Ogres than it is. I don't know. They look kind of doomed. Mornfang Cav going to try and rear charge these Zotes here. No Flesh to Stone to save them this time. And the Tyrant plus the Fire Belly team up on the Spellsinger of Life in their own Noblar support and get big damage out. This could be huge. Taking out the enemy caster while also getting rear charge on the Zotes, that should bring the balance of power back around. And I would agree. That was a huge series of play for the Ogre Kingdoms. You'll love to see it. We have some Lead Belchers. Can they peel themselves with all these Eternal Guard coming? Nope, because the Glade Riders are also coming over to say hello. Oh, but the Spellsinger of Life is going to be left alone. She's so quick on her horse that she gets away. So she has rallied. We have Massacre popped on the Tyrant to give him terror and some more damage. Mornfang Cab with their great weapons trying to fight back against the Firebark Elders who are also getting hit with Noblar Trappers. So they're overall trading up, but they're very, very, very far behind on HP compared to the Firebark Elders. So they will lose the fight eventually, but Lead Belcher is also offering supporting fire. Overall, the Firebark Elders took a lot more damage. Zotes get an Earth Blood from this little spell singer. They end up fighting a Fire Belly. He has met, he has fire damage. So he might stop them from healing a little bit more. And Orion's currently killing a whole bunch of Noblars. Lead Belcher's still firing away into the Firebark Elders trying to take those guys down while Mornfang Cap with Great Weapons fight Treekin on the far side. Those Glade Riders with Hagman Tips, last time we checked in on them, they were full HP. Something terrible happened to them because they took a ton of damage while we weren't looking. Firebelly's going to route, route away from the Zotes as the Tyrant still tries to slowly heal up with his snacks and get rid of these guys. This Lead Belchers offer a bit of supporting fire as well. Firebelly, I don't know if he'll rally at only 200 HP. Ogres are not the bravest of bunch. Speaking of which, the Tyrant literally tear routes away from Orion as Orion charges in. Lead Belchers still trying to help do anything. Okay. The Morphic have great weapons finish off those tree kins. Saber Tusk Facts trying to chase around the Glade Riders. The Wood Elves are relying pretty heavily on Orion for their balance of power at this point. The Ogre Kingdoms are rely relying on, I don't know, I guess those great weapons, Born Fangs, but not a lot of stuff looks good for them right now. As the Firebark Elders take exception to being shot in the face this whole time. Looks like the Tyrant is back. His Snacks healing only works in melee, though. Lead Belchers kite back away as Noblar Trappers charge into the Firebark Elders. But the Firebark Elders are going to path right through those Noblars. And this is the big fight. Can the Mornfang Cab with Bright Weapons get a good surround on Orion and really beat him up? We've talked about this with Crushers before. It's the exact same here. Sometimes they'll all pile up on one side and not get us around. Other times they'll get us around. They'll absolutely massacre the fool. Firebark Elders were kited effectively. The Lead Belchers dealt with them. One thing have avoiding Orion for now. And the Tyrant with his snacks getting away from these Zotes. Dismember slows them down. Allowing the Tyrant to get back to his forces. Because if he died, like so many of these Noblars would just rout out of hand. Lead Belcher's really struggling to figure out how to hit a Zote, but a side charge from the Mornfang Cab with great weapons will do it. Say goodbye to the Zotes. Lead Belcher's kind of need to start shooting at these Eternal Guard that are behind them. Instead, they turn their sights onto the Spellsinger of Life. Now, Ryan does use the Hawk's Talon. That's going to route all four of these Noblars, mark my words. Oh, wow, I'm a super genius. Anyway, all of the Noblars are routing and shattering. Lead Belchers do manage to turn around and peel for themselves, which is nice. Get rid of those Eternal Guard. They shatter. And the Tyrant is charging in. Ready to fight the Spellsinger. Get his snacks going. Kill her off. Gets two big hits on the charge. 
Misses the third, but whatever. He's just happy to be charging up his snacks. Because they're bulletproof? Hell yeah. Lead Belcher is firing at Orion, the last of the Eternal Guard, who do shatter away. Lead Belchers get some good slicing shots through Orion. The Spellseer of Life is pushed away. Treekin are routing, Eternal Guard are routing. Oh no, but the Firebark Elders are back. Oh no, Lead Belchers! Lead Belchers with only two volleys left, I guess they, they've done their job, they can die in peace now. But... If I were them, I'd try to throw guard mode on and get one shot on those Glade Riders the Headbang tips just to shatter them off. That would be pretty big. Orion is fighting the Mornfang Cav and the Saber Tusk. The Mornfang Cav down to five leadership. Negative two, they do route at last. We've seen Saber Tusk before do pretty darn well. And they're doing great in this game again. But the Snacks, the Snacks man is back to firing at the Firebark Elders. Well, not firing, killing the Firebark Elders. As the Light Belchers fire at Orion over the heads of their Noblars, trying to do good there. The Tyrant, he's trying to heal up. He's currently on fire because of the Firebark Elders, but he does route them off, saving his Lead Belchers. I really want the Lead Belchers to kill those Glade Riders with one of their volleys because I'm super worried about them, like, routing the Tyrant and then chasing them off. Balance Powers, Wood Elf favorite as the Mornfang Cav are back. Lead Belchers are shooting at point blank range into Orion, getting him nice and low. The Terror routes off more Noblars yet again. Blade Rider still firing in. They only have one volley left. After that, they'll become kind of a meh melee cav. But the Tyrant, on the approach, routes away from Orion. Lead Belchers firing the last couple shots they have into Orion, but the Firebark Elders are back. Those Blade Riders are behind him. Orion's charging in. The Mornfang Cav, if they route one more time, they will shatter, but they're getting a charge bonus that keeps them in it for now as they charge straight into Orion, get some decent damage out. Awakening the wood. Would have slowed down the Lead Belchers, but the Ogres surrender, realizing it is over. Orion's 2,001 higher value, so it's with 1,800. We watched with 1,000. Firebark Elders and the Treekin were annoying, for sure. Blade Riders did fine. That fresh axe did fine. GG. Fresh hairy spaghetti. Tyrant and the fire belly not getting a ton of value, unfortunately. And I also run into this. I feel like the fire belly just sucks. Even if you need burning head, he's just kind of mad for some reason. Lead belchers did well when you put them together. One did especially well at about 2,000 value ish. Horn Pink Cat's Great Opens also did quite well. Nala Trappers did very nicely. Saber Chest Packs did awesome. G, geez. We move on to our final game of the night. Alright, last game of the night. Electric spinach versus surprise. No caster. Bring the caster. Bring it. Bring that caster. For the Empire. Not for Zinch. Zinch obviously brought a caster. I guess this build looks fine. Oh, excuse me. War wagons are good. Hammer of the Witches is particularly good against Zinch. With its magic damage and stuff. I like it. Alright, for Zinch, we have two Centigores of Zinch in the Vanguard. I love it. That unit is great, even though their stats would make me think otherwise. A Cockatrice is pretty fun. I think it's a bad monster still, but I do think it is fun. Exalted Hero of Zinch, did he bring his R in Jesus? Yes, he did. We'll see what the Book of Secrets rolls today. The Soul Grinder of Zinch, a Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Metal, Founder Translation, Searing Doom, and Chaos Warriors and Marauders of Zinch with some cool orders. On the other side, the Hammer of Witches is showing its true power as it hurts that Soul Grinder quite a lot. We have some Empire Knights, two War Wagons, a bunch of Huntsmen, and I thought I saw Basic Archers. No, Cross for me. Okay. Volkmar the Grim is in, and the Centicores of Zinch show their ugly faces, running down the Hammer of the Witches in the backfield with a sneaky attack. Anyway, a front line of great swords and swords move without. Cockatrice taking a lot of damage from the War Wagons on the way in. The Hammer of the Witches is entirely doomed, though. As each guy snuck through. Thanks for casting a replace. Hopefully, to make another tournament soon. Good night, all. Good night, sir. Good night. Cockatrice getting good damage on the war wagons. I wonder if it should use its net on one of these war wagons. That would be pretty cool, especially paired up with Centigors. Speaking of the Centigors, though, they're into the back line. Volkmar is trying to peel them off, but they are stopping a lot of the, the Huntsman and Crossman and stuff for now. 
more wagons get away, and the Empire deleted the Cockatrice. The Empire frontline is also winning versus the Marauders. This is getting a little concerning. Empire Knights catch out the Soul Grinder for now. I think the Soul Grinder might win that melee combat eventually, but he's going to take a lot more damage than he wants to. Big final transportation on both war wagons as they need to continue kiting away from these halberds, but they're taking a lot of damage, so we'll see if they can keep moving. Empire Knights and Greatsword starting to get back onto the Centigores. Will they stay in the fight? Nobody knows. There go the war wagons running away. Shooting into the Centigores' backsides. The Empire State Troops are winning the front line pretty darn good as Volkmar helps against the Centigores of Zinch. Grand Shield of Faith giving some good old buffs. There's a nice overcast, not overcast, just regular old Siren Doom hitting the Bright Swords in the face. That Shield of Faith actually helped him out quite a lot. War Wagons still kiting these Halberds, but now the Centaurs of Zinch have noticed to their presence, and the Centaurs are much, much faster than the War Wagons. They'll catch up to them very easily. These other Centaurs are terror routing. That should end soon, and then they'll be back in the fight to get the War Wagons. Cockatrice has also returned. So I think these War Wagons are on extremely limited time. Volkmar is losing a fight with the Exalted Hero of Zinch. He is a Halberd hero. Not something Volkmar really wants to deal with. Great Swords are in the backfield trying to deal with the, these Halberds. Well, Empire Knights need to find their way out of here. They don't want to be fighting on top of these Halberds like this. Blue Horrors are getting killed by the Sigmarites in the backfield. Great Swords will bleed through them pretty easily. Meanwhile, back here, like we were saying, I think the Soul Grinder is going to win this fight eventually, but man, those Empire Knights are just taking up so much of his time that he's not able to keep throwing or doing anything crazy. All right, more wagons firing downhill in the Sorcerer Lord of Metal. The Cockatrice does manage to catch him. Has he used his net? He has not. We'll see if he can use it before he routes or something. Chaos Spawn Summon is out from the Zinch Caster. The balance of power is roughly even if you consider the Chaos Spawn Summon is going to fade away. Which I find weird. I feel like, I feel like Zinch is very ahead. Volkmar's taking big damage. His heal cap is in sight. He needs to try and path out of here. He's getting wrecked. And the balance of power is tanking with him, so I guess I understand that one. Huntsman are going to shoot at the spawn summon for a little bit. Not that matters too much, but uh, Volkmar is in too deep. A bolt of change is coming for someone somewhere. Looks like it's the Great Swords. It does a lot of damage to them. And War Wagon continues to shoot at the Cockatrice to try and get rid of that monster. Bounce power is tipping further away from the Empire as the Cockatrice tries to land and then just shatters away as another Searing Doom hurts the Great Swords. For Zinch, how are their Halberds doing? That one's almost dead, that one's almost dead. So if Volkmar can run away and just heal up for a bit, he might still have a chance in this game. The Banishment tries to finish off those Halberds, and it goes away from the Huntsman because Sigmar protects his own. The Soul Grinder might be able to finish off Volkmar, but with that Chaos Spawn Summon about to go away, we have some Blue Horrors, Demonic Instability crumbling, and then those Centaurs are going to route again. Zinch is going to have a lot of balance of power, but it's a lot of balance of power in their two single entities here, which aren't actually that good of melee combatants. So I think... <laughs> the Book of Secrets got a bound fate of Buna, but it was cast on the Volkmar. That's funny. Anyway, uh, I think these Huntsmen have to focus down the Soul Grinder, and then you'll be okay. War Wagons can help try and save Volkmar. But yeah, if you kill the Soul Grinder, you're going to be fine. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't get too close to that Exalted Hero, bro. Don't do it. The Huntsmen are trying to kill that Soul Grinder. They're getting good damage down onto him. But can Volkmar live long enough? Because if you get this into a late-game slap fight, we've seen what Great Swords can do. It's kind of nutty. Another big volley from the Huntsman onto the Soul Grinder of Zinch. Volkmar is rolling away, keeping it safe, keeping it clean. Empire Knights going to chase off these Zinch warriors with halberds. I like that. These other Empire Knights also need to get activated, just chasing down stuff so that doesn't come back. Ah, and Volkmar, he got to the end of his attack orders. So he takes a charge in the back for free, and then he's going to turn and fight the, the halberd caster. This is a mistake. Oh, no. The Zinch guy's just beating his ass. He starts to kite away again, though he took some unforgivable damage. Soul Grinder is close to demonic instability crumbling, but it just it charges into the Huntsman to stay alive for now. And these other Huntsmen need new orders. They're currently facing backwards, and they gotta kill. They gotta finish off that Soul Grinder. Get it, get its ass. There it goes. Demonic instability taking care of that thing. 
taking its ammo with it, which is pretty precious. And an overcasted Searing Doom onto these Great Swords and the Huntsman. Pretty good damage from that spell. Taking out an important unit, but the War Wagons? The War Wagons and the Huntsman are making this Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Zinch have a bad, bad time. War Wagons, three volleys left on them, but a big charge attack from the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Zinch finishes them off. And we have some Swordsmen running up to fight with this Exalted Hero for a while. Empire Knights probably have to back off. Empire is ahead on the bounce power again. And the Zinch Caster is at half HP. Zinch doesn't have anything else either. Like, there's nothing else around the battlefield that matters. These Chaos Warriors are going to rout if anybody looks at them wrong. There's a big, big, big Searing Doom. Ouch, 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 ouch. Even with the Grand Shield of Faith, it still killed almost an entire Swordsman. And Volkmar is getting charged. Now, he has Huntsman protecting him. Maybe he should turn and take the fight with the Chaos Sorcerer Lord. As long as he doesn't fight the Exalted Hero, he might be okay. And then the Huntsman can offer a bit of support. Also, these Empire Knights have to get the rear charge in. Come on, Empire Knights. Where are these Great Swords going? Ah, uh, the Empire's disparate forces have to all rally together and come back, but Volkmar is beating up on this Chaos Sorcerer Lord, and the Empire actually takes the lead on the balance of power. Nice Huntsman shots coming in. The Swordsman try and keep the Exalted Hero of Zinch off of Volkmar, and here come the Empire Knights with the rear charge. So far, things are going well. There's a big Searing Doom, though, to get rid of the Swordsman and let the Exalted Hero of Zinch get to Volkmar, which he does. Now, Volkmar is beating up on that Chaos Sorcerer, but the Exalted Hero is here, and he does need to back out. He has no business fighting this uh, halberd character that is way outside of his dueling range. Volkmar tries to get away. The Exalted Hero is trying to chase him down. It's not going to work out, and a terror route comes in for the Sorcerer Lord of Metal as his, some Huntsmen continue to poke him down. Zinch coming back on the Bounce of Power in a big way as the Chaos Sorcerer Lord manages to rally, and Volkmar again drops orders in front of this Exalted Hero. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Alright, he's going to get away. Alright, he's going to get away. Let's go. Let's go. He's pogging out of here. 500 HP left on the Sorcerer of Zinch. And then 2,000 HP on the Exalted Hero. But uh, as long as he's kited out effectively, he can be dealt with. Don't let him charge Volkmar. Don't you do it. Don't you fucking let him charge Volkmar. Volkmar's trying to roll away. 45 speed to the 33 of the Zinch guy. Empire Knight's also going to try and get away. And the Exalted Caster Boy of Zinch is back. Great Swords are joining the fight versus the Exalted Hero of Zinch, but... Uh, Chaos Sorcerer Lord might get a Searing Doom down. Nope, he gets routed. And Empire Knights are going to try and stick with him and keep him routing. Meanwhile, the Empire's state troops all pile in onto this poor Exalted Hero. Surprise, your micro needs a lot of work. Dude, we're here for you. We got you, fam. We all start somewhere. The caster is back. Can he throw a Searing Doom on this giant blob? Honestly, that would be game-saving. Always coming back. He's got a Searing Doom. He's got a Searing Doom. He's gonna cast it. He's gonna cast it right on these fucking guys. Grand Shield of Faith. Grand Shield of Faith at a perfect time to give them 20% resistance for the Searing Doom that's coming in. Just as Army Losses is hitting, the Searing Doom couldn't quite save him. And Surprise takes the W versus Electric Spinach in a nail-biter. That was lit. Electric Spinner's Lord did good, Soul Grinder did good, Exalted Hero did amazing. The Cockatrice unfortunately failed him. Centigors did amazing. Halberds did fine, Blue Horrors did fine, Horror uh, and Marauders got wrecked, but yeah, the Cockatrice really lagged behind for him, unfortunately there. For surprise, his can his Hammer of the Witches got killed immediately. War Wagons mixed value, because one of them got sniped out pretty early. Great Swords did fine. Um, Huntsman, fantastic value. Crossman got rolled, and then Swordsman did fine. GG, indeed. That is it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta go into bed. Um, we have a Clan War stream coming up soon. I just gotta figure out when to find time to do it. But you can see all the replays here. We have N RTK versus NC, ODM, and then Mercenaries versus... Oh, we had MTK versus XMT, and then there was Mercenaries somewhere in here. Oh, wait, yeah, ODM works. Duh. Duh. Anyway, good night. Thanks for watching. And if you played, thanks for playing.